Hey, listener, what's up? How's it going? Thanks for pressing play. On this episode of the Jock and Nerd Podcast, we start out discussing how insanely entertaining these Floyd Mayweather, Conor McGregor press conferences are leading up to their big fight. What am I even watching? We take a look at Spider-Man Homecoming's box office, see how it stacks up to the other Spider-Man movies. Uh, They've released some beautiful character portraits for the Black Panther movie. We got a rumor regarding the setting of the Wonder Woman, the sequel. A little hint about what Quentin Tarantino is working on next. What to expect from Marvel Studios and other studios at San Diego Comic-Con 2017. A bunch of awesome movie and TV recommendations and so much more. All in this edition of the Jock and Nerd Weekly for Thursday, July 13th, 2017. Check. Check one. All right. This is Roy fans out there. Let's give it up. What's up, listener? Welcome back to the show. Thanks for checking out the Jock and Nerd podcast. We're Jock and we're nerding. We're spoiler alert. Remember when we didn't, when we bashed that theme song? And now we've been using it. You guys, since. you guys didn't like it. My name is Imran, by the way. Yeah, my name's Anthony. He's the jock. Yeah, he's the nerd. And this little scumbag is Rug Boy. What's up, Rugs? What's up, dudes? How's it going? <laughs> so good. Yeah, look, Rugs, what you do you think about lathered the... up. You sound all lathered up and ready to go. I've been drinking. We guys, I didn't, you know, you didn't like the theme song, but I didn't really care because I, we needed a theme song. So we just decided to ran with it. Rugs, what are your opinions on that theme song? It's growing. It's like when you hear it a bunch of times, it then you just get used to it. Audio branding, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. It's like, how do you think all this shit ends up on the radio? They just play it a thousand times, and you're just like, okay. A shitty song becomes, uh, okay, this song's not bad. I'm I've heard of, this before. Yes. <laughs> uh, if you're a new listener, thanks for checking us out. Rugs, what do we do here? Tell the new listener. Well, besides give each other reach around. What? When no one's oh, looking. Shit. Um, <laughs> that happens? We I talk about uh, the latest pop culture. Comic book related shit and uh, Bukaki stories. <laughs> Is that the tagline? Is that the new tagline? <laughs> Is Bukaki considered a baptism? Uh, geez, we're gonna go or, there no, already. No, or a baby shower? Oh, no, well, like I don't know. The, Is Bukaki? I spell a baby it differently shower? than it's supposed to. Be. Would it be considered a baby shower though? That's what I'm wondering. In a way. It's a, ba- it's a baby batter shower. Uh, oh, oh, it's a pre-baby shower. Uh, that's Are we going to have to cut this out that's, like we did No, last this is show. all staying in. That's not what we talk about on the show list. No, it is. Look, we give you. We g- did have that sex guy on here. So we yes. can talk about Bukaki, maybe. And you were. you were, That yeah. was Rug Boy's best friend. That He was. You got, he loved you. <laughs> I don't even remember you were on that show. Listen, what we do bring you every week for free in the feed, geek news, reviews, and interviews. This show. Is uh, no different. However, this week uh, it's been a little bit of a slow geek news week, and I think that's because uh, the San Diego Comic Con, yeah, right around loading up for the that. corner. So yeah. they're not. It's it was, so mostly we just have is rumors, rumors and clickbait. That's they're the withholding yes. the news. <laughs> we're just gonna we're just gonna make shit up. Is that what we're gonna do? Yeah, we're just gonna make shit. No, there's a couple of things I got well, here. War of the Planet of the Apes is out. That is, it is out today. Said we're recording. I know. It's okay. I got to see it. We got to check it out this we'll weekend. Check it out. And we'll do, we'll do a review eventually. Absolutely. Yes. In a timely fashion. Yeah, next week. Uh, if the, if the, uh, for the new listener, they should check out our last show. Uh, we did our, a review there, too. It was an awesome, a spoiler, full Spider-Man Homecoming review. Controversial. Critical. Controversial. Yeah. We got a lot of good feedback. We'll be sharing some of that at the end of the show. After we go over some geek news and some recommendations... So what do you say, guys? I'm going to restart the show. Here's a little sweeper. Anthony, you love when I do this. The Jock and Ned Podcast. Something important is happening. Oh, wait. Pay attention. Now you can pay attention, listener. Music has changed. Uh, Listener, if you want to uh, get in touch with the show, recommend us some news topics or uh, movies to review, or send us your thoughts and reviews on stuff. Or if you have a scoop. If you got a scoop, definitely we'd love to get the scoop. Just visit jockandnerd.com slash contact. I like vanilla. Uh, I like, I'm partial to chocolate anything myself. Yeah, I'm, I'm more of a vanilla guy myself. Ugh, you would be. Yeah. Stupid mole. I like your vanilla. skin. My skin is vanilla, yeah. but on the inside, it's chocolate. My heart is chocolate. 
More like coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an unstirred coffee with cream. Yeah. Uh, so ch- <laughs> what was I saying? Yes, contact us. Jockadirt.com slash contact. The show is already like in a wacky start. For I don't know why. All, I, don't I don't know. know. It's understand. a weird vibe. I, I, uh, there's maybe alcohol involved. Yes. Drink up. Social. Everyone take a social. Uh, right. <clears throat> We're going to start with some jock news, though. Yeah. Because uh, Adam Morris recently, uh, our podcast science advisor. Did you notice I was tweeting back at him using the jock? Yes, that's account? good. I'm glad that you, uh, you know. That I know how to use Twitter. That you know how to use Twitter and that you can talk. <laughs> I'm you know, the millennial of sports because I, mean. I don't I, I didn't know what to say. So yeah. that was a good conversation. But he uh, basically he sent us this bit about the press conference. So Anthony, we Anthony, all of us just watched live on YouTube. That was it, the third? Oh, I'll set it up. Yeah, you set it up, because what we just watched was the most entertaining, crazy shit I've ever seen. So, if you didn't know, or if you're living under a rock, Floyd Mayweather is fighting Conor McGregor, so the best boxer of all time, versus the current UFC 155-pound champ, are boxing in a match, Conor McGregor. Weird. And they're doing a world tour, although it's really like the white people's tour, because it's like (laughs) L.A., Toronto, New York, and London. There's nothing really else in the world that they're going to. But they're doing four cities, four days, and the whole setup is they go out, they're promoting this fight, and it's basically, Connor, you go out and insult Floyd. All right, your turn, Floyd. You do the same to Connor. And apparently that's all the instruction they were given because this was doing. an unstructured so shit They're show. on day three, which is what we're recording, and that was in Brooklyn, New York, at the Barclays Center. Barclay. There was probably 15,000 people there. To watch easily, yeah, and people like, paid money for this. I don't know if they paid money. It might have been free, or you needed to like sign up. But they paid. To, they went and saw Conor McGregor in a what he claims is a polar bear, polar bear fur suit with just <laughs> nothing underneath, so no t shirt nope. or anything, and like weird pants. And then Floyd Mayweather basically wearing a tracksuit. Dude, this listen. Let me tell you, this was this is already so. I want to hear what you guys think before I like interject <clears throat> because you guys are the non-big sport fans out of the group here. Well, you don't really see this stuff with UFC. I, I mean, you see with boxing, but it's never to this level of, like, showmanship. It, it seems like like a something you'd see on, like, the WWF or WWE. Yeah. I mean, for us old guys, WWF. Yeah. But WWE, where they're doing, like, a promo. Yeah. Where they're, like, I expected the Macho Man to come out and be like, you know, Elizabeth. <laughs> Elizabeth. <laughs> yeah. To me, it was like going to like a, a hip hop concert where there's two rival rap bands. Only there's no music. The yeah. music never happens. So they're like they're just walking around. Mayweather's throwing money in the air, calling Connor a pussy and a little bitch. And and Connor's like, "Oh fuck you, take off your heels." And he's got flowery pants with fringes on them. And I'm like, "What the shit is this?" They get up close to each other. This this was this was wild. It was wild and. From what you tell me, Anthony, he's already way more entertaining than the fight is probably going to be. Now, I want to ask Anthony yeah. this. Would you go to this? The press conference? Like, would you, like, spend a day and, like, sit around and watch this? Or, I mean, we watch it on YouTube in the comfort of... And it doesn't last very long. Our, our home. So, yeah. having been to plenty of UFCs, I have gone to weigh-ins before. And what that is, is two men weighing in their underwear yes. for a fight. And then posing against one, each, one another. So if I've been to that stuff, you bet your ass I'm going to something like this. <laughs> I figured you'd There's no shit talking I've, I've there. Seen, yeah, I don't even see shit talking. I just see men in their underwear. So if, if I've been to that, I'm definitely going to something I got to like point this. out this link Adam Moore sent us where McGregor's suit is phenomenal. He has this dark pinstripe suit. But on closer inspection, oh, yeah. the pinstripes are made up of the word fuck you repeated over and over again. Oh, shit. That's a dope suit. That, that's day one. It's suit. brilliant. It's that, brilliant. I love that suit. I would buy that suit. So the, the whole gist here, like the running theme is McGregor's been dressing up very like lavishly because he has money now. Yeah. And Mayweather's been dressing like with hoodies that yeah. are like money team with like the country logo on that, that he's in. So the whole running gag is McGregor's been like, because if you don't know, Mayweather, apparently there's rumors or there's reports coming out that Mayweather owes a lot of money to the IRS. Yes, and yes. that is why he's taking this fight, because he owes about $21 million to the IRS. And he's filed a claim that, can we delay that I pay this until after this fight? Oh, shit. Which Whoa. is why in Toronto, when he came out, they're chanting, pay your taxes. Oh, they did pay. that in New York, too. And then McGregor's like, fucking learn to read. Why right. are you carrying a so backpack? The, 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 uh, the running is theme is Holy McGregor's shit. been saying he's broke. Yeah. 
That's why he's wearing track suits and ah. that's, and you have really no money and yeah. you don't know how to read. And Mayweather's come back with You're a quitter. You're a quitter and you're basically a bitch. No, well, I mean they're both called yeah, each other bitch. Yeah. But he's basically come back with you've only made like three million yeah. and I've made hundreds of them. Yeah, he like keeps he's calling, calling he comes yeah. call he keeps going back to I'm rich as fuck and you're not as rich as me. So how much of this is actually sincere? Wow, uh, that's a long pause. <laughs> uh do I think they don't like each other? They probably don't really care for one another, no. Do I think that they're actually like hating each other? Probably not. They're they're both they both got to this position because they're both awesome shit talkers. Yeah. So it's a performance. Yeah, it's a performance. I'm surprised that actually the the crowds being more pro McGregor. I didn't realize that Mayweather Mayweather is basically made all his money because he his whole gimmick is that He's this rich motherfucker. Like I'm rich. Yeah. So like, so he's everyone, an elitist boxer. Everyone hates him because he's rich. He's a terrible human being. Literally, like, look up his court records. Wow. And he beats on women. And wow. Shit. And he's this fighter that's like in boxing. There's like action fighters that like go after it and like he's boring. And he's a defensive fighter, yeah. so he's very technical. He doesn't ever get hit. He's never in fights where it's a back and forth battle. He's always dodging punches. Hitting people and not really knocking anyone out. You've never seen him really have it have to fight. You've never, you've never seen him in a war. You've never seen yeah. him like fight somebody where it's like he could get knocked out. I also think that Conor McGregor, <laughs> McGregor, M- 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 <laughs> Conor McGregor is like the underdog in a lot oh, of ways. Yes, because yes. like he's going to be fighting him with his hands tied or feet tied behind his back. Yeah, he right. can't use his feet. Right, he can't use the ground game. So he's basically stripped down to one discipline yes, that he may not be the best at. Yeah. So it's like the dynamic here also that a lot of people are aware of is that it is, this is like the biggest mismatch in the history of sports yes. because you've got the best boxer of all time, basically against a guy who's never fought in, in these rules before. So you've got that aspect. I'll also throw this in there. I don't know if America's ready for a rich black guy that flaunts his money like Mayweather does. Yeah. And you've got, the whitest of white, an Irish guy, yeah. being like, well, fucking knock his ass out. So you've yeah. also got the racial ass. Jesus. I mean, on the one hand, I could see the anticipation for a colossal beatdown on McGregor. On the other hand, I could see that it's, could there be a possible upset? No, there's no upset. So the, you, your, <laughs> your prediction is not, has not, has it changed? No, 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 no. The only thing I'm going to throw out there yeah. is that boxers have a certain uh, way about how they, how they go at it. Uh, MMA, go at it a little bit differently. So there's a whole different mindset when you're an MMA fighter. So it's different. It, it's, I think it might, it might be hard for him to adapt to like Conor McGregor coming at him at like a mm. UFC fighter. If he, if he completely can dismantle his game, then it's all over, but you never know. No, they're there. McGregor's whole thing is that he's claiming that he's going to come in there and not fight like a boxer would. He's going to fight, He's going to show him different stances. Okay. He's going to show him things that he's never seen in the ring. Throw him off. Just to throw him off. He's also been teasing. This is another like side story of this. He's also been teasing that he said in the first conference, if McGregor doesn't speak my name with respect throughout this entire tour, I might just throw an elbow at his eyebrow. I oh, might shit. just kick him upside the head. What? So there's also that aspect of will McGregor go crazy and decide to just fucking kick him? In the fucking head and knock him out, or like just, impulsively. Yeah, just fucking choke him and disqualify. And and he's the- he's teased that like if he decide if he acts the wrong way to me, I might just choke him. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Does Wait. McGregor lose money? Yeah, is yeah. there any? There's a lot of like there's a, one of the Mayweather's um see is promoters or whatever is handler or someone that works with him has been like. If he does that, he'll lose a shit ton. Of, like, there's probably written clauses that he doesn't. It's do gotta be like. if you get. But he's also like McGregor's been like teasing throughout this, like this isn't a real fight. If if we were to fight in a real fight, you'd be dead. Like he's been telling him this over and over. And so over. McGregor doesn't consider boxing real fighting. He's just no. Well, he considers it a limited sport, yeah. which in, I agree as well. Oh, it's not a real man. fight. It's boxing. I I'm not sure who I'm I'm rooting for now because I, I mean they're both McGregor's kind of aped. Mayweather's game. Mm. McGregor, if you watch his promos in UFC, he'll do the same thing where he'll be like, I'm rich and you're not, and you're a fucking bum because you don't know how to McGregor negotiate. McGregor does this. Oh, he does the same thing. Oh, Jesus. See, it's all fake. So they do the same. I mean, wow. it's, it's all like, but the thing is like, 
again, the like, race involved, Mayweather does it, yeah. everyone hates him. Yeah. McGregor does it, it's yeah. like, oh, lovable Irish guy. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. And so was that the last one? There's one more. There's one tomorrow. So we're recording this on Thursday. What's the date? July 13th. There's yeah. one Friday, July 14th in London. That's the one in London. And that one will be, I mean, that'll be crazy because that's, there's all the Irish fans will travel. Oh, that's shit. That's right. They're Ireland. closer. Yeah. yeah and oh, no man. one, no one in London likes. Where are all Mayweather. the Mayweather fans? That's weird. Like the audience, you really, I mean, he grabbed Mayweather, grabbed the Irish flag and wrapped it around him. I was like, oh, shit. In, uh, wow. He should have wiped his ass with it. He should have. He, he crouched down kind of like he was taking a shit with it on. But yeah, but that was weeks. Old. August 26th, save up your coins for your pay-per-view money. You know how people. much this is? How much? If you want to buy it in regular TV, it's eighty nine ninety five. Okay. If you want to buy it in HD, it's ninety nine ninety five. That's not bad. No, Ten dollar difference? No, well, that a normal pay per view is like fifty bucks. Oh. I would argue that this is worth a hundred dollars. And they're though. and they're claiming that this will break the all time record in pay per view buys. Wow. The one the record so far is Pacquiao Mayweather. Yeah. Which was like four point four million. Wow. So they're claiming that this one will get five. And so then after this is, do you think they'll set it up for a rematch? If if there's so, so much money in this, Mayweather's they can make been more doing money. this weird thing where when he's promoting this fight, where he's been like talking up McGregor, he'll be he'll be like, "Man, I'm old, he's young, what? And he's hard, heavy hitter, <laughs> doing the when, reverse like, psychology. Or anyone that knows anything knows that like Mayweather should kill him. Yeah, right. But he's been doing this thing. So there's a part of me that believes that Mayweather might like not try to knock him out, but like just keep the fight going twelve rounds so that. McGregor can be like, I deserve a rematch. I almost, I, I almost made it. it. I made it yeah. twelve rounds with it. Right, because Mayweather, there's Ooh. nothing more that Mayweather likes than fucking money. Yeah, he loves money. So that's interesting. What do you do? That's going the into only this? reason he's fighting this fight. How do you play it out to kind of make it seem like there could be a, an upset next time, kind of thing? You know, right. that Who he knows? that he actually gave him a challenge. To that f- seems like a fix, though. Almost. Yeah, I know it could. I mean, Boxing is really corrupt, man. M- Manny Pacquiao fought last. Two weeks ago or a week ago? Yeah. And he lost a really controversial decision. He was in Australia. He beat, he was fighting this guy named something Horn. Yeah. The guy was from yeah, Australia. He should have won that. He should have won that. Yeah. He won the fight. Yeah. They gave it to the other guy. Wow. The other guy's a fucking school teacher who just started boxing like five years ago. Wow. What a pussy. Yeah. I've also heard from fans that they're <laughs> they're, they're really upset that that, that what it, this is tarnishing the, the boxing. The real, a lot of boxing fans are really upset because yeah. this isn't a real. I mean, it's a 49-0 and guy fighting a guy. It's a gimmick fight. It's, yeah, a, it's gimmick a gimmick fight. fight. It's what you call it? The, uh, Dana White calls it a freak show fight. The freak fight. show fight. Yeah. I believe it. It's definitely a freak show it's fight. Like, it's literally like, the, it's like Barnum and Bailey. Like, let's grab the super tall guy. Yeah. And the it's really the fat bearded guy. lady yeah, versus yeah. the yeah. super tall guy. I mean, if well, you guys were watching it, wasn't it kind of that feel? It, where was, it was like yeah. circus feel. It was. Yeah, it was. Definitely it was show. insane. I wish somebody would have started rapping though. Like it just felt like a hip hop concert <laughs> without any music. <laughs> but wow, that was it. I'm all, I'm hooked. I'm paying attention. Yeah. I can't wait. It's, August twenty sixth. If it's we'll if it's out. getting you involved, that's yeah. the, that's the intent. That was crazy. That was that was so entertaining and crazy. I loved it. I loved it. All right. Let's talk about some geek shit now. All enough right. of the jocks. All right, enough of the jocks. Spider Man Homecoming. Like we said, we had a review last episode. Uh, I we all to, loved it. We all well, we were critical, but we loved it. <laughs> we, it's a good movie. It's just not. I, a, let me not let me Spider-Man. let me interject real quick too. Yeah. At work. Yes. People have been coming up to me like, "How could you rate it? What you rated? It? Oh shit! Really? Yeah. They're like, Anthony's How catching shit. I'm catching they? shit from that. <laughs> like, they're, they're, and they're like, <laughs> "Are you just too like?" Snobby now? Like, do you think because you have your podcast that so you don't like things? Can anymore? people not have different opinions? What's what's happened to the world? Everyone, Joe from work, I think rated it an eight, and then someone else came up to me. He's like, I have it like eight point eight. Like, this is one of my favorite movies. How do you rate it a six point seven five? I mean, if it wasn't, a well, did you listen to the podcast? Yeah, There's so many reasons. We yeah. told you. Well, I was like, I don't really want to go over this right <laughs> now. I I have to work. Wow, <laughs> that's interesting. What this movie has done to people? Well, it's listen. We came out with a very critical review because. We all stated that we liked the movie. Yes. It was entertaining and enjoyable, but we did find if you were going to sit there and historically see if this is a Spider-Man movie and have all the things that a Spider-Man movie needs, it doesn't have those things. Now, they made a decision to leave those things out. It was a conscious decision to go in this direction. And whether you're on board or not, you could still point out and criticize that those things are missing and it makes the, the film a lesser film in some people's eyes. So that's that's up to the individual person. You can't shit on them for pointing those things out. That's that's being an asshole. 
You know what? Bilotti made an interesting comment in uh, on Facebook talking about this movie, and this movie he makes some me flack too. He did, but this movie makes me realize how Godzilla fans felt about Shin Godzilla. It's oh, kind of the same. I see thing. that comparison, but most of our fans don't even give a fuck about That's Shin Godzilla. That's the thing. But it was. But a, I, it was, I see that comparison, yes. but it's Shin Godzilla is is a, you can't watch that movie more than no. Once. This is definitely more rewatchable, enjoyable. <laughs> You know, hopeful movie than reading pages of text on a screen in a, in a Japanese boardroom. Counterpoint, Anthony, there are people who will watch that movie and, they, yeah. and then love it. Yes. So I don't get that. It's like weird. Like a friend at work who loves it. Yeah, it's weird. Shin? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Shin, the, I mean, that's such a, just but, a dry but, movie. But, yeah, but for me, Homecoming was kind of, it was a, a reinvention, yeah, no, a modern a reinvention day retelling. Of, of a character. It's going to piss like. off old school fans because right. it's at the cost of like having right. this character. But now everybody loves Spider Man. So at the end of the day, this is good beer. It is yeah, a little good. something Lagunitas. I something like IPA. At the end of the day, I couldn't be more happy that people love Spider Man this much. You know, if you, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's Spider Man. I feel like that there's room for course correction. Mm-hmm. I feel like that there's enough room because they didn't address it. It's weird that they didn't address like some of the things that we were talking about, like Uncle Ben and the responsibility. I think and it's his, because and his motivation and, and, and all that stuff. Yeah, and we got a lot of emails from people kind of defending that and explaining that, but they're right. It's because I rewatched room for growth. A little bit of Civil War. Yes, and I've heard this response, and I can kind of see it. He, Peter Parker, does make the comment to Tony where he's like, "When you have powers like I do, and then the bad things happen, yeah. and you don't do anything, yeah. it's because of you." Yeah, which is kind of the great power, great response. Yes, in a wordy so fucking he- long-winded I, way. I've heard, so I've heard yes. people be like, "He's already done the great power." Great yes, power, great power, great response. God, they're just so afraid to like redo anything that's happened in those first five movies. But it doesn't. I don't understand. Because they need some of it. That. Is, you can incorporate some. It's of that. Sony still. It's yeah. still yeah. Sony. It's but the, the same... it was the writers though. They made a you know a, a decision like we're not doing the same shit. We're, we don't want to do anything. And to their credit, they they did that. They didn't do anything that's been done before. Which is kind of why it pushed it so far over right. another way. Well, listen, the criticisms that we have are not saying the the film is bad. No, no, it's just that those things are important to Spider Man fans, and that's and if but there's room for growth, and yeah, and, and we said it in the review, they correct. could they could take it into more canon. Uh, opening weekend, it comes out. Megan, remember we were uh, they estimated one ten, one twenty, one seventeen, hundred seventeen million opening weekend domestic, not bad worldwide as of July twelfth. Sitting at two hundred ninety three million dollars, so it's doing good now. Here's the thing: this is the second biggest opening for Sony, it's all in all time. It still hasn't beat the first biggest opening for Sony, which was Spider Man Three. They made a hundred and fifty one million dollars. Look at look at oh, the shit. at the time Spider Man yes. Three. The internet was big, but yes. people weren't factoring in Rotten Tomatoes as much. Also. You're coming off Spider Man One, Spider Man Two, good point. and Spider Man Three is coming off that with the promise that Venom is. It was 2007. Spider Man Two was so good, yes, yeah. that they had all of this goodwill from the fans. Absolutely, that lead up led to a 151 million dollar opening. You look at the look at this. Look, so, it, it ended up finishing third behind those. So, films. but but how about the fact that Sony's top producing box office movies are Sam Raimi, Spider Man One, Two, Three. Oh shit! Yeah. Nothing is beat that out of the. Top five Spider-Man films. Oh, and then Amazing five. Spider-Man number five. So, um, yeah, number boy, five. did Sony need the profits from this movie because they, none of their other shit has made them anywhere near. I mean, Terminator 2 Judgment Day is at 10. I mean, that was a different time. I'm looking at fucking Tootsie, the Karate Kid, and Air Force One in their top 20. That's, That's bad. That is really bad. <laughs> but you know what? Tootsie is a great fucking Dustin Hoffman movie. It's fantastic. Wow. Are they, that, is this factoring in inflation? Holy shit. That's bad. I, I, Anthony, did you see Tootsie? No. Dude, t- Tootsie's a great movie. <laughs> is it good? It's fucking Does it anything to do with the role? No. The, no. the, the candy the nor, the, nor the song. Okay. No, not the, dance. the dance either. Yeah. It's Mrs. Doubtfire before Mrs. Doubtfire. Oh, yeah? So Mrs. Doubtfire aped Tootsie? Nah, there's another just guy dressed up as a girl and, 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 and passing. But it's an amazing movie. I love Dustin. Did you watch ever watch Narcos? No, I haven't seen that yet. On First the Netflix. It's phenomenal. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Pablo Escobar's mom looks like Dustin Hoffman in Tootsie. Oh, okay. Just when you looks watch like it, just have Dor- a, have Dorothy. A little, what was her name? Dorothy something. Yeah, have a little chuckle to yourself while you watch it. All right, Tootsie fans, there's a deep cut for you. Easter egg. I don't know. Uh, so that was a side by side gift. The other thing I thought was interesting is we talked about how Rotten Tomatoes was like 93, 94%, which 
I think they all think it's a little high. A little high. So the Metacritic score, which is not a pass-fail, which is more of an amalgamation of numbers, a little more realistic. It's sitting at 73 out of 100. That makes more sense. I that think that makes seems way to make more, more sense. sense. I don't follow Metacritic as closely. Me neither. So I don't know what to compare to, but if it's out of the 100 scale, I would, that right? makes more that sense. That is a little more reasonable. The pass-fail, they just got caught up in, in fresh and not. The thing is, is have you heard, like, I mean, our review was, was fair. Have you seen other reviews from famous like reviewers that, that, that are, are even on the same wavelength? That are as critical? Ours? Yeah. I have not. That's the, that is the crazy thing, Ruggs, yeah. is I have not seen a major movie. reviewer other than Movie Bob. Yeah. Talk oh, Movie neg- Bob will tell you like it is. No, but it, but there are other reviewers that I trust that I'll be like tell you like it is. And they have no one has been as critical as everyone this. fucking loves, everyone this, loves movie. this fucking movie. Because I think for them the joy of watching it outright overrides everything. However, I will say, I heard uh, Kate and Patrick, see, here's the thing, they reviewed it. Patrick was, the word he used, he was milk toast about it. So it wasn't over, over the moon. He had issues, and he had a lot of I also pacing issues, he thought. I think, from the criticism we've gotten from a few people, I think they're forgetting that we all like the film. Yes. <laughs> so we we did like the film. It's not a bad movie. This isn't like my Batman versus Superman review where I hated the fucking It's film. weird because the review has nothing to do with the movie. It has to do with the decisions they have put into place before they even started making the thing, before yeah. they even shot one frame of this movie. Well, one of the things that you can definitely criticize is the all the all the Tony Stark tech yes. that's in there in the suit. So that detracts from Spider-Man. So a lot of people didn't like that. I mean, even in the most uh, complimentary reviews, everybody always said there's a little bit too much tech. A little too tar- t- you know, but it also can't be argued. I thought about this. Like, Peter didn't really start fucking up until they fucked with the suit and disabled the thing. And then the suit and Tony's suit caused the problems. I, I want to say one th- I was thinking about the suit thing because it-, it does kind of bother me with the suit. The suit is good for Tony because Tony is a normal human being. He needs the suit. Spider-Man is already enhanced. Yeah. So the suit isn't him. Exactly. The suit doesn't define him at exactly. all. He is already a superhuman being. I, no, that's so he doesn't great, need that's a, a suit point. that tells him what I to do. I always think it's overkill. It's a little bit of overkill. you have an enhanced powered person. Even, may, even factoring in that yeah. it's not canon, it's just overkill. He doesn't uh, need an enhanced But even in suit. the comic books when he got the Iron Spider suit, I, it's overkill. Like, you know, a given enhanced the guy, the guy is a, a, or a, advantages. A human spider, yeah. basically. What else? You don't need you don't that. Need yeah, you don't need it anymore. Right. Yeah, the other fuckers are just that's a like, That's like making Thor the size of Hulk. Right. Thor's already strong. He yes. doesn't need to be bigger. Yes. You don't need... Spider-Man's already smart and strong. You yeah. don't need to put an iron suit on him. Oh, you don't need to iron man him out. You don't need to pimp him out to the iron. Some I, people like it. Some people... I don't like Some it. people love that iron spider suit. People love this fucking movie. I mean, it, it, <laughs> it is in... It in, it is almost to me it boggles my mind how much people. Love I, I just hope it, they they can it gets better with his storyline and 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 they they use it and build off. This of is it. how I feel about most movies though. I always have like a, <laughs> I always have like a bone to pick, and then people are like, no, it's awesome. Like, why the fuck do people? You are, you are probably the most jaded of, out of us three. Yeah, but this time I'm on your side. Yeah, this time it's it's get you're rubbing off on him. You're making me jaded. <laughs> you're rugging it's, off on him. Well, it's, <laughs> well, you have to point these things out. Hold on, I got to rug one out. Oh, I could go all night with the rug puns now, I just realized. Uh, <laughs> You're feeling pretty loose, huh? Hey, you want to rug my ball spot? Uh, I wanted to talk about some uh, no. deleted scenes from Spider-Man that they've come out and talked about, like, the, the money shot of them, Tony and Spider-Man swinging through the city. That never made it. That one, I feel like, was put into promos just to hype that Iron Man was in it, and I don't think they ever had I, that. I think that's what they that, said. That makes no sense. No, that what, yeah. yeah. I think that's what they said. It was more of a promotional yeah. piece. But uh, there's an article on HuffPost that Marissa Tomei is talking about a scene that was cut that she's kind of disappointed that it was cut out because it, it, uh, it kind of informed the character. So here's the scene she describes. There was something going on in the neighborhood, and there was a little girl in distress, and I saved her, and Peter saw me save her. So you kind of saw that he got part of his ethics from her, she said. Tomei continued, then I come home and I don't even tell him that that's what's happened. And of course, there's all this stuff he's not telling me. So he's like, how was your day? And I'm like, it was fine. But really, I was shaking inside because of this whole crisis that happened in the city. I'm kind of fibbing to him. He's fibbing to me. We're living in this house together. And it was a very interesting setup. I was quite disappointed that that wasn't in there. Maybe it'll be on the deleted scenes on the Blu-ray. There's also a shot of her that she's in the school, right? Yeah, there's a shot of her in school. There's that shot of the vulture swooping down in the atrium of a hotel, which they kind of just, they used the swooping down, but they replaced the background. Mm-hmm. Like, that never happened. 
It's so weird when they do these trailers and you think you're going to get something that like the kiss was taken out. Yep. Well, I mean, the best example of that, I think, is like the Rogue One. A lot of the Rogue One stuff after the reshoots. A lot of these trailers nowadays are not using. I think they're doing this on purpose. Do we like that, though? Do, but do we need to like, know that? I'll say, like, let's say they, they they shoot the movie and then they see it and it's like, oh, it sucks. We have to fix it. And then they got to delete some stuff. I understand that. But that shot of Iron Man and Spider-Man, like, coming towards the screen. Yeah. They obviously put that in to sell the movie. Right. That's bullshit. You could have kind of ended with would, that. Would would you count what I would counter with? This is not what I think, but playing devil's advocate. Would you? We've complained that trailers show too much. So, would you go with? Hey, they're just fucking weasel t- trolling us a little bit, so that when we come to the theater, we're actually seeing something different. I don't know. Could we see a future where they shoot just promo stuff oh, just for marketing, and none of it's in the movie? Let's not forget. Remember the original Spider Man. Now, this is partly because of nine eleven. But it had that whole teaser. Right, where he's on, where he sees. Where he sees the bank robbers and the helicopter between the world. And clearly, I don't think that was ever intended to be in the movie. No. It was just a little teaser. It does surprise me what you're talking about this t- trailer or this. Uh, this is a great character out. moment. That is a great character. I don't know where it would have fit in. I don't know either. But it did Early surprise on. me that they had Marissa Tomei as Aunt May yeah. and didn't use her as much as they could have. And there's no reason she needed to be a hot Aunt May. Like, it doesn't. I'm still thinking about it. Like. I think it doesn't make sense. It it like reduces her character to just like a, an object, like a sex object. Like yeah, like I, it doesn't matter that she's Marissa Tomei. Marissa Tomei, Tomei looks good for her age, but there's no reason to acknowledge it all the time. Yeah, why even get like, over be, your head? She with could that. just be a, a she's a woman. Yeah, she's a woman. Okay, look, people are going to continue to love this movie. It's going to continue to make money. I like good the movie. For it. I don't want. Yeah. I, I, if no, you love this thing. movie. Yes. You should love it. It's, it's a it, good, but it's a good. It's a fun movie. I gave it a seven. Yeah. I, I gave it an eight. I want to yeah, see you, it again. You I love just, this movie. It's a good movie. I just wish they made an actual Spider-Man movie. I liked oh, it. I, I was. I liked it. I wasn't in love with it. What's the fucking big deal? Yeah, go it's a good fuck point. Yourself. Go fuck yourself. Moving on. Let's talk about Black Panther. We got new character portraits and details for uh, Marvel's upcoming Black Panther movie. That geek boner. This is gonna be huge uh, for Marvel. This is gonna be as big as Wonder Woman for like female diversity. And we'll get a lot of stuff probably next week. Yeah, Comic-Con. San Diego. We'll probably get some more uh, trailers and shitloads coming. We're gonna get shitloads. What we have now is some really cool from Entertainment Weekly yeah, photographs or portraits. Uh, this is the first one, Black Panther. I'll put a link in the show notes, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Jockander.com slash one seven seven. The suit looks dope. He's standing there. You like there. that? I kind of like it. Well, you, you think it's a Photoshop job? This one, I don't know. This one, I don't think so. I think this is a, just a straight uh, photo shoot. Okay. I, okay. I, I, it is similar to the suit they showed on the trailer. But the suit, I think, in the movie will be a lot of uh, CGI'd over. Yeah. I, I didn't. I thought the suit was perfect in Civil War. Yeah. Me too. So I don't know. They, they, this they one kind of has They've a, adjusted it. I don't hate it. I don't love it. The, the mask is kind of a Power Rangers y mask. Mm. I agree. Like mm. the Black Ranger? Yeah, a little bit in this shot it is. Yeah. Was it different in the first one? Yes. Mm-hmm. It was less Power Ranger. You can do a side-by-side comparison. Yeah, they're, they're very different. Hmm. It's all there's, this- like, there's like uh, designs happening in the chest area. In in Civil War. It's like stripes, yeah. Yeah, and it's not. They, they, and uh, they, they also did like. This one, they, it looks like they painted on eyebrows, and I don't think the other one did. It had a couple. Of, they changed the lines. The yeah, white lines, the lines have changed, the eye, yes, yeah. on the mask. But I mean, I still think it's a sharp suit yeah, for, no, it's, for it's, black. It's okay, Panther. but like, it's okay. But when you have something that's better, you know, what does this need? Now we talked about Andy Park. He designs a lot of the uh, the costumes for. But why do they got to ch- like every movie? They toys. have to toys, baby. Oh yeah, yeah. It's all about the toys. Like if you nail the one design and you're like, this is perfect, and then they come back and be like, oh shit, now I got to fucking make another one. Toys, like baby. every movie, I got to make another fucking suit. It was kind of funny though in Spider Man where they had Captain America come in the Civil War suit. Uh, yeah, the earlier. Well, that because that's when I thought it was even earlier when uh, Captain when Winter Soldier he wears the Civil War suit. Yes. But then so, uh, Avengers: Age of Ultron and Civil War, it's the uh, World War Two suit slightly upgraded. Well, what? That's the suit he was wearing in the PSAs. No, he was that wearing one's he's the, wearing the old. He's wearing the he, old. He was one. wearing. He's wearing the Avengers suit. Yeah, well, yeah, that, Avengers. so he shot this like do, you know in continuity. He would have shot this well, like, back then. You'll notice even like Amazing Spider-Man one and two. Amazing yeah. Spider-Man one, he's wearing like a suit 
that's like not traditional Spider-Man. It's weird. Yeah. Then Amazing Spider-Man 2, which everyone thinks is the best suit ever, yeah. it's a totally different suit, and they don't even explain it. <laughs> it just changes it just for changes no reason. It. Also, uh, we were talking about extra things on the Blu-ray, I guess, for Spider-Man Homecoming. There's a lot more of those PSAs, Captain America. Like, well, they only had them like one day, and they had them read like a bunch of shit. So I'm, I'm digging there. the bulge, though, on this Entertainment Weekly. Look at the unit on that guy. Uh, Jeez, that. check out well, the unit. Black. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Black Panther. Let's, they got other. They have Nakia, who is Wakanda's top spies. Okay. Uh, that's Lupita Nyong'o's character. She is, what is that? Uh, what is that, a frisbee? Uh, it looks like, it's like a rat, I don't know. It's it's a round-throwing object that probably returns. Like Xena Warrior Princess. It was. Xena had it, yeah. Uh, it's like a round boomerang. Yeah. I don't know how it comes back. Uh, you have Whoa. Oki, Denai Guerrero, uh, Michonne herself. It says Denai Guerrero is going to steal every scene that she is in. She's the head of the Dora Milaje, the all-female secret service to T'Challa. And uh, these costumes, they get more and more colorful. They're pretty sick, man. Beautiful. A lot of oranges, golds, gold rings. I like rings. the incorporation of like old, tradi- like the next stuff is like very the old. African, African stacked stuff, gold yeah. rings. You see that. In fact, and future techie. Yes. Yeah. Combining it like the. The design of this is amazing. Here we have Wakabi, which is Get Out star Daniel Kaluuya, who plays Black Panther's best friend. I put that on my sushi. Wakabi. Oh, it's a little spicy. He's the head of security for the Border Tribe. And, you know, he's got a a blue shawl and you start to see some of the face makeup, leather straps. Uh, I I love the design on these. Shuri. Letitia Wright plays T'Challa's sister, Shuri, who crafts weapons like the Vibranium Enhanced Panther Gauntlets. On her hands. She's also a genius. Runs the entire Wakandan design group. Look at these badass gauntlets, I dude. know. They look like Voltron. You know those things do some damage. <laughs> Again, beautiful neck support uh, leather. Uh, what do you even call that? It's almost like armor and, and support. They're doing a very good job oh. of, of designing stuff that makes it look like unlike anything Marvel's put yeah, yeah. Very different. Very different than what we've seen in movies. There we go. Forrest Whitaker as Zuri. He looks he, like he's wearing a bunch of purple ropes. He's wearing a purple ropes. He's got like a spear. Uh, he doesn't have the face makeup on in he's this one. He's wearing dreads. In the, in the, yeah, around his neck, there's like coils. In his the trailer, eyes look all right. That's weird. Is that you think that's Photoshop? <laughs> <laughs> you think Forrest is like, hey, can you just select this area with a lasso? I'm just glad rotate. That. <laughs> can you rotate it a little bit? I Come just, on, I help just me say out. His eyes look the same size. <laughs> I think All he, right. I think he does that on purpose for dramatic <laughs> effect. Forrest Whitaker looking pretty good. Eyes look okay. Well, eyes looking symmetrical. Zuri is a religious figure or spiritual figure. Uh, Forrest's character, more than anything, is a major tie back to T'Challa's father. Zuri is somebody who looks for guidance. He's the Obi Wan to Chadwick Boseman's Black Panther. Uh, here's Angela Bassett as Ramonda. Well, gonna, you're going to put a link to this in the show yes. notes because we're this is a audio show and we're talking about visual things. Well, right they're, they're awesome pictures. Wakanda is the queen mother and uh, she's got an awesome headdress. Here we go, Michael B. Jordan, formerly the Human Torch and fan fantastic Eric Killmonger. Uh, in the comics, Killmonger is an exiled dissident from Wakanda who believes T'Challa will be too weak a ruler. So this is the guy that's going to uh, put on, and he's got some cool body armor. He's kind of he's kind of looking like uh, Deathlock from Agents of Shield. He's got that Gumby do like uh, he does have the Gumby dreads to one oh, side, like Bobby going. Brown. <laughs> oh yeah, he's got the he's got the my prerogative every little step, Bobby Brown <laughs> fucking hairdo. I'm Gumby, damn it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, okay, here we go, Winston Duke. Mbaku, Winston Duke, Mbaku. person of interest, uh, plays another leading figure in Wakanda who poses a threat to T'Challa. What the Black Panther is to the royal family, the gorilla is to Baku's mountain tribe. This is awesome. The idea that they worship the gorilla gods is interesting because it's a movie about the Black Panther who himself is a sort of deity in his own rights. Baku wears white fur, animal mask as the villain. Man ape, look at and you see. I love the furry gauntlets, and you see the fur on his shoulders. Uh, so regarding man ape, are there any more? That's the last one. Uh, man ape is an interesting name for a villain. <laughs> uh, but they're saying that Baku won't be called man ape in Black Panther from Entertainment Weekly, more from Entertainment Weekly. They said, We don't call him man ape. Executive producer Nate Moore said, We do call him Baku. Having a black character dress up as an ape, I think there's a lot of racial implications that don't sit well if done wrong. That's so crazy. But the idea that they worship the gorilla gods is interesting because it's a movie about the Black Panther, who himself is, uh, I just said, sort of a deity in his right. So 
One tribe worships the panther as a god. One tribe worships the gorilla as a god. Why can't you call him man ape? I guess it's cooler to be a panther than an ape. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, it's like, yeah, hey, call me a black panther. That's no problem there. Uh, but what, uh, what do you think, Anthony? Yeah. You think uh, it's the right call to not call him man ape in uh, black panther? I mean, I, I mean, I know ape has a lot of racial connotations. I, I don't know. I, <laughs> it does. I don't know. But. It's weird. It's just weird. I think you just call him Manape. Ma- yeah, Manape. <laughs> just like, oh, just shit. pronounce it differently. Yes. I-, I can't be, I'm not one to judge. Like, I'm not one to be like, this is right or wrong on this subject. But yeah. I didn't see a problem with it. But if there is a problem with it, then I'm ignorant to it and I don't know. Uh, he's just going to be called Baku. <laughs> We're call like, Baku. We'll call him. We'll just leave it at that. All right. Although I kind of, I, I kind of get it in the world of black I don't care what they Panther. call him. Yeah, it doesn't really it matter. Doesn't matter. He it doesn't, doesn't need matter. to be called man. If they were, if they worship gorilla gods and his name is Mbaku, yeah, it's, it's close cool. enough. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. If you get the idea that right. they are a rival tribe, so great costumes, man. Uh, we'll, we'll hope we got some more. From I mean, San Diego. regardless of what you call, if call him, yeah. if you have this racial predisposition to see that apes or have something to do with yeah. racial. You're going to think it anyway. Right. You know what I mean? So it's really whatever. Yeah. If, if you're already considering apes and African-Americans similar, you already kind of Look, suck, I think, right? I think Pakistani people, person. I think Pakistani people and giraffes are similar. So, but what's, so what's the problem? I think you don't see Only anybody. you. You don't see anybody. Uh, <laughs> don't where are my social that. justice warriors about? Stop calling Pakistanis giraffes. Is that a thing? No, I okay. made what, what I animal- told you we're going to make up a lot of shit this show. What we animals do uh, Pakistanis uh, worship? <laughs> Fucking smelly zebras. I don't know. Goats? Like uh- <laughs> No, we eat goats. Oh. We eat all that shit. Okay. Not pork. We don't like, uh, no, except for pork. I like pork. <laughs> <laughs> You're a terrible human. You're going to hell. Look, I'll go to hell for pork because bacon is tasty. Oh, shit. It's totally we, worth we it. We just lost all of our Pakistani audience. <laughs> well, they don't get the internet they, in Pakistan. They, 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 what they do you think? Watch uh, Master of None season two, and you'll yes. know exactly what Imran's talking about. You'll know about. what I, what I, what I've been going through for forty <laughs> years. Uh, let's move on to a uh, Fox Marvel property, oh, and it's shit. the fucking ridiculous Venom movie that we know is going to star Tom Hardy. It's going to be phenomenal. Phenomenal. We know it's not going to have Spider Man in it. They've said they want to put Carnage in it. Now, uh, a rumor is that, according to the hashtag show, Venom will also include Anne Weying, Brock's ex-wife, and one-time symbiote host. The production is reportedly looking to cast an actress between the ages of 25 and 32 in the role. Although Weying is a lawyer in Marvel Comics, her backstory is still unconfirmed. Well, uh, oh, is she Venom? They want a girl okay. Venom? I gotta ask you guys now. Now we know a little bit of details. What What are your thoughts on a Spider Man list film that includes Venom, Carnage, and now she Venom? This makes no fucking sense whatsoever. Well, I saw a dog taking a shit the other day. <laughs> <laughs> this is and, going good. This and, is gonna be good. Uh, just when he was squeezing the last little loose turd out of his ass, I was like. That's what the Venom movie was like. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think that's pretty accurate. I think you could take that to the bank, listener. Uh, How because many symbiotes are you going to have running around? I didn't even know that this woman exists in the comic book. You know what? If it was a girl, Venom would be a symbiote. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Look he's killing it today. He's bringing it. No, look. I didn't know there was a she-venom. I didn't know there either. was a girl, Did Venom. Did you know there was a she-venom? Uh, I think I'm, I was aware of it, but I just put it out of my mind. Yeah, because, because it's stupid. stupid. Yeah, I had no idea there look, was a fucking girl. A girl could be a venom. It's not like no, that's oh, not just guys can be venom. No, yeah. that that's not that's not the point. <laughs> just not a very well known character. Well, of course, it's got to be a white character. girl being ve- a black venom. Venom has a son. What's his son's name? Venom doesn't have a son. He does. Well, who? Sim- it's it's called Carnage. Like, no, no, no. It's I the character what, like anti venom. The that's symbiote has a son. No, yeah. There's a look it up. <laughs> look up Venom's okay, son. We have, to, we have to look now. We have to look it up. Venom toxin. What yep. the fuck? Who the fuck is Toxin? Yep. What is this bullshit? See? This came out oh, in 2004. Toxin or is the this Toxin? dance lot? It might be. <laughs> you no. fucking bastard. Uh, it, uh, he's the third major symbiote of the Spider-Man series. See, the, that's the, who I was thinking of. The ninth Toxin. known to have appeared. Uh, what? The first host of the Toxin symbiote is former NYPD police officer Patrick Mulligan. Toxin Laker bonded to Eddie Brock as his second host. So, first appearance in Venom slash Carnage number one, September 2004, created by Peter Milligan. Wow, he's pretty good. Okay, so it's not 
It's it, not Dan Slot. It's not Dan Slot. But uh, that's what the she venom reminded me of. Is that all these symbiote off? off I was not reading comic books in 2004. Clearly, this to- is yeah. To- to- so there's toxin. There's a she venom. There's carnage. There's, there's all also this. there's also venom, which is Flash Thompson venom. Yes, there's the Flash Thompson who's Agent Venom, Agent who joins venom. Guardians of the Galaxy. There's a lot of venoms. Like you could you could do a venom verse. You could do well. Yeah, <laughs> you could you could do a spider. Dan Slot is currently writing that. Rug Boy is going to read. All yeah, of how many how many ways can I play out one character that's special? <laughs> Let's just make everybody. First, the we same made everybody Spider Man. Then we brought all the Spider Man from all the Venom thirty ninety nine. Now it, we need to have a thousand greed goblins and now uh, twenty thousand Doctor Octopus. So, if the rumor that Nick Spencer is taking over Amazing Spider Man for Dan Slott is true, that means Spider Man has been a communist spy this whole yeah, time. Nick Spencer's oh, shit. currently doing the he's the Hydra Cap. Hydra guy. Cap. Okay. So I feel like he'll just do like, oh, Spider Man's a Nazi too. You know what? Everybody is Hydra Nazis. Fuck it. What else are you gonna do nowadays? I don't read comics. No. Anymore, it can't so. be worse than what Dan Slott is. <laughs> shit. All right, let's move on to some uh, DCEU news. One of these days, we're going to have to have Ruggs explain to us why he just hates Dan. Oh, he can go. I, I've already done it. On no. that show, Growing Up Spider-Man, oh, I believe okay. we, ex- we we talked about yeah. it. Yeah. All right, fair well, enough. The thing about Dan Slott is that, I mean, people have done clone, the Clone Saga and all that other stuff, but he, the first thing he did is he made a superior Spider-Man that was Doc Ock. And then you on, did not like that, and I did not like okay. that, but it was fine. But then on top of that, he had Spider Verse, Spider, Spider Island, Spider Island, where yeah. everybody became Spider Man. Yeah, everybody got Spider Man powers. And then he made a bunch of stories with all these other Spider Men all the time. Do you like that he made Spider Man Tony Stark? Like no, I don't like that either. <laughs> so, like every, so basically, anything that he's done has been shitty. <laughs> now you're just egging him on. Andrew. No, I am. I, I totally am. I just, like, you know, but I'm just explaining to you that's <laughs> yeah. why. It's, yeah. the, it's very simple because it's not, these are not Spider-Man stories. It's like if I were to write Batman and then make Batman into something that he's not, make also Batman's Superman. So it would be like making Batman reveal his public identity and all of a sudden have superpowers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's not Batman. That's not Batman. Okay, not Batman. Fine. Yeah, fair enough. You know what's not Batman is Wonder Woman. Uh, we have some rumors about the sequel, when it will take place. I believe Patty Jenkins is not officially confirmed to even return Ooh, yet. That's that's rough. That's right? Isn't rough that guy. crazy? That's crazy to me. Uh, a, Patty Jenkins not officially yet returning, but according to production details, Screen Rant has learned the story of Wonder Woman 2 will be another historical adventure prior to the modern day DCEU. Set during the 1980s, the film will send Diana against the forces of the Soviet Union in the closing days of the Cold War. Production team is expected to remain on board for the sequel with confirmation that Jeff Johns is developing the script with Jenkins, who is still in negotiation. Do you think this is a good move to do a period piece? I I do not. Really? I'm. mm, Here's why. Here's why. I I like the period piece aspect for the the prior, like the, the first movie, but similar to Cap, where we got Cap in the real world, I want to see Wonder Woman in this world. You will, in well, Justice listen, League. If you, you will, but if, you won't see her own soul. If you're going to bookend the first movie in the in the real world, in the present day, why would you want to go back? Right. There's, that story's been told. So they're working their way up. Also, like just logically, if she's had this many adventures prior to how her being nobody discovered. nobody fucking knows her? Exactly. How come exactly. nobody, how come that when she shows up, Bruce and Clark are like, who the fuck with you? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it, it, it might be pretty good. But I just don't like the setting. I I kind I kind of love it. I want to see another period piece. They like did a it? great okay. job with the World War One. I'm glad they're skipping World War Two because we don't need to see that. Everybody's seen that. So you want to see a Cold War? I don't know how you make it exciting though, because <laughs> the Cold War wasn't really because the Cold exciting. War was a bunch of just looking at each other, espionage right? yeah. and spies. Here's another crazy fact: the report also confirms that Chris worse. Pine will be returning once again, acting as Diana's ally. Steve Trevor, oh, shit. how the fuck is this possible? It only has to be flashbacks. If, no. it's, not, if it's not flashbacks, this is terrible. He could, have, he could have parachuted out of the plane. Yeah, but he'd be like 90 he years old. He would be really old. He'd be really old. If it's not flashbacks, this is a bad idea. So on Famine on Batman, they postulated that they were like, could he be Martian Manhunter? Which makes no sense. Steve Trevor? Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. Get the I- fuck out of here! <laughs> But how? <laughs> but okay. No, how could he be Martian? So Man listen, Man? even the flashbacks. Okay, yeah. say fine. They use flashbacks. 
did we not kind of see their whole everything, every meeting, their whole relationship in the first movie? Like, what is there to flash back to? See, look, the only way they can do this is if Steve Trevor survived the the crash, right? And then Diana brings him to Thermoscara and bangs his brains for like centuries. It's like a Lazarus pit <laughs> effect. Yeah, he she keeps age. him alive. I would watch that. He's in <laughs> Thermoscara. So after they've done the whole Kama Sutra about fifty thousand times, uh, then they go into the into the eighties, and they're both still young. I would definitely I, watch that. I think <laughs> what they're what's really call hap- me DC. <laughs> I'm Tons. writing scripts. <laughs> what's really happening? I think is they have such a big hit on their hands. They're like, we can't fuck this up. Yeah. We got to bring everyone back. Yeah. And we got to do another period. Like we want to do the same thing. But we he was something. always signed on for another, for two movies. Uh, so they so have, fair enough. They so have a plan. Probably, uh, they, they could do flashbacks. He could have survived and they could tell some little sidebar story. Maybe afterwards. Yes. Ah, that's true. Yeah. The, the Martian Manhunter thing. It, I don't, I, I don't like that at all. Only because that. I don't mind straying from Canon, but Martian Hamp Manhunter is from Mars. Yeah. It's, Steve Trevor is not from Mars. So that it would is a be dumb like, idea. So it would be like Martian Manhunter pretending to be Steve, Steve Trevor. Trevor right. and fuck be, Martian Manhunter. That's, that's a dumb that. idea. If you do that, you're a fucking asshole. Gotcha. Hey, I mean, Marvel pulled off Vision. Yeah, which is a you hard pull character off no, to you, do. But you didn't do Vision as Steve Trevor. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. You don't do that shit. That, no, that's too shoot. That's too shoot. You shoe don't do that. Don't do it. Don't do it. Let's talk about some Batman movie updates now. We talked. We said War for Planet of the Apes, directed by Matt Reeves, written and directed by Matt Reeves, I believe. Both the, the last two comes out this weekend. Comes out. He's already starting to think about his next movie, which I believe will be the Batman solo film. Right. Yes. So he has expressed ideas for. He has a, a trilogy planned, which is kind of exciting. Of course, he does. He's ambitious. Uh, he's ambitious. We talked about how he wants a detective noir. Now, if he has a three-story arc planned, hopefully Affleck sticks around for all of this. That would be great. Uh, but the other thing is, bigger news, is he is not using Ben Affleck's script. It is starting from the beginning. He is starting from scratch with a brand new script. This is largely the reason, I mean, Affleck was kind of came on to do this. Let's throw in, too, that Affleck's script had Deathstroke in the movie. Oh, that's right. Who was right. already cast as Joe Mang Joe Banginello. And Manginello. he might be in, in, in Justice League. We'll what see. is that we'll footage see. from? Yeah. We'll see. Um, all bets are off. All bets are off, though, on him yeah. being the... So the whole appeal of the Batman film was everyone was like, it's Batfleck. Yes. Directing Batman. Y- yes. Right? That yes. was the whole, that was the whole yes. appeal, right? Like, everyone was like, yes. Yes. It's all out the window. Oddly, <laughs> this is all out the window yeah. now. I am not all that disappointed. I was no. excited for that. Yeah. And I'm almost as excited for Matt Reeves doing his thing on this. I agree. Let give Matt Reeves the reins. Let I don't think have- it's a bad move. I don't think it's yeah. you know, I don't think it's bad. Matt Reeves has not made a dog shit movie no. yet. I wonder what that Affleck script is. But was. I I wonder what could have been. Also. But he could take <laughs> a make it's a always Batman a first. movie. It could happen. Here here's the question for you guys. Let's say Justice League tanks. Yeah. Does Ben Affleck stick around for a Batman film that is now not using any of his material? <laughs> no, I mean, it's an easy... Unless he's contracted to do it. It's an easier well, exit for him. This is... if Ben Affleck, he's got an ego, but at the same time, I think he loves Batman. And if Matt Reeves comes out with a great Batman story, I think he's on board. All right. But he seemed to have kind of slyly positioned himself. It seems like Matt Reeves is like... To get out. Affleck. Bat, Bat Fleck, you're kind of... This is my show now. Yeah. You son of a bitch. Let's see. And I mean, and Ben can... You know, Affleck's been in other people's movies. He can give control. But that's weird. Coming from like... Well, that, I feel like I that was, was going to direct this. This was going to be my movie. I feel like that was the whole pitch to get Ben Affleck on board. Yeah. Like, yeah. You will do your own Bat Fleck. Yeah. You will do your own Batman film. It'll be yours. But I agree now with you. Not I agree with you, Anthony. I'm excited Matt Reeves is rewriting this. But Affleck didn't want to do it. Well, he didn't That's, want to have to write it and direct it at the yeah, same time. That he, was his he excuse. Did, he didn't want to do it. I think he, he wanted to do it, and then he realized he can't do it. You can't ask I still think he wants it out, but Batman. he's trying to find an out of all this fucking bullshit. So he had to, like, hand it over. Um, I think that he would have liked his idea to be preserved, but if someone steps in that you respect and that you know is going to make a pretty decent movie, yeah. I mean, if, if he's a fan of the Planet of the Apes movies, he should be, like, fucking psyched right now. Yeah, no, I agree. No, no one likes to fucking direct films that aren't their shit. Yeah, no yeah. one wants to have an say on their stuff. 
which is why uh, people get fired. <laughs> I think it does uh, happen. I think you're right. I think when War comes out, I think a lot of people are going to get excited for the, for this that he's he's. Oh, I'm excited for this. Yeah. It's just funny because everyone was like, like hardcore Ben Affleck fans Affleck were like, Batman, Affleck, Batman. Yeah. That's what we want to see. We want we want to see the town Batman. It ain't happening. It ain't happening. Argo ain't Batman. Yeah. It's not happening. All right, one last thing for movie news. We'll take a quick break. Uh, we're all big Quentin Tarantino fans. Anthony, I don't know if you are. We, you know, if you, I enjoy Quentin Tarantino not as much as you guys. If you were, you know, if you were a, a young lad in the '90s and you, you you came up with the Reservoir Dogs to the Pulp Fiction, his early stuff, it kind of changed movies moving forward. Nobody saw shit like Pulp Fiction. His movies are just an excuse to see inside of the that guy's brain. I still think he's one of our, the That's most incredible is. directors it's like alive he, right now. He doesn't make movie about things. He makes yeah. movies about himself, about mood through, yeah. through other things. Yeah. 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 So when you watch a Quentin Tarantino movie, you're really learning about Quentin Tarantino. Like he, he'll take a like Django and chain. It's, it's a movie about a slave who gets free and, exacts revenge but it's really a movie about quentin tarantino and how he feels about it well yeah i mean the plot to a quentin tarantino movie never is like so it doesn't tell you anything about those movie. movies are central to the director it's his story kill bill is how he feels about that genre mm -hmm. so you know any movie that he does down to true romance which is the first movie he wrote it tells you about quentin tarantino so not a lot of directors are like that so and we also know that he was, he talked about making 10 movies and then he's out. And I, 10 more? No, just 10 total. Oh, no, bullshit. That was his whole thing. And I think he's on <laughs> like eight or nine right now. So he's prepping his next movie. We have details. Looks like he's going to uh, do a movie that has to deal with Sharon Tate and the uh, Marilyn Manson murders. Not in, Marilyn, Charles Manson. Marilyn Manson didn't kill those people? No. I he was just lied to. Weird. Marilyn Manson removed a rib and then sucked his own dick. <laughs> I, I was lied to in history class. And he was Paul in Wonder Years. <laughs> Wait, no, that's I, Marilyn no, Manson. No, he no. looks like him. <laughs> that's, uh, a, that's an urban man. The Charles Manson murder, Sharon Tate, who is the actress and wife of director, Roman Polanski. Uh, and you know how we, we know how he likes to have female leads in a lot of these movies. Right. Like in Kill Bill, yep. Jackie Brown. Uh, he's, it, it, he's looking at Brad Pitt and Jennifer Lawrence. Uh, I don't know. Pitt is going to play. I like how Manson. you go female leads and you lead with the male. I know Jennifer Lawrence had been approached. Jennifer uh, Lawrence. I don't know if she'll play Sharon Tate, but I think what's interesting is he's never done a movie based on other historical effects outside of like Inglorious Bastards, where he just he changed the ending he of World War Two. Yeah, yeah, he used he'll, he'll, he'll use setting, but then he totally like uh, right. fan fictions World War Two and kills Hitler. You know, which is awesome. So. The question remains, will he just do like a, a docudrama about no this? Way. Or he's really going to fuck with the, no the Manson murder? There is no way that his shit is not going to be all over this. That's that's interesting because like true crime podcasts are huge. I love the Manson story. If you've read anything about <laughs> you, it, you love that. dude, it's crazy. Like Charles Manson was a really crazy cat. And it's the story is incredible. The, every time you bring up Charles dude. Manson, I think a celebrity death match when they had yeah. Charles Manson versus Marilyn Manson <laughs> versus Marilyn Manson. Dude. Who won that one? Do you remember? I don't remember. <laughs> Charles Manson would just roll up the fucking <laughs> famous rock stars houses yeah. and just take their house over and kick the rock stars yes. out of the house. He, they would go to farms. He would tell his girls to go fuck the owners of the farms and get friendly. Charles Manson was the mass over. murderer. He he actually didn't kill a lot of people himself. Okay. He made other people do it. Got it. Apparently, so if you know anything about Manson, a, a little bit from the article, Manson had ordered a group of his followers to attack the inhabitants of a house in the Benedict Canyon area of Los Angeles, believing it was owned by a record producer who earlier had rejected him. Over the course of several hours on the night of August 8th, the four followers using guns and knives brutally killed Tate, who was eight months pregnant, and four other so occupants. So this tells me already, Man, uh, Manson... Tarantino yeah. loves brutal Mur fucking yes. violence. This yes. is going to be a fucking horrible movie in a terms of a mean woman fucking movie to watch. Gets brutally butchered for no I don't even reason. know if you can do that in R anymore. Have a pregnant woman get. He'll do it. He'll, he'll, he'll make it an X. <laughs> Listen, he's, the, he's not a fucking pussy. <laughs> no, he's he's definitely, definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> Listen, he's got to do it. Charles Manson. <laughs> Manson. He's got to do it. Dude, he wanted to start a race riot. This was his whole, his ultimate plan was. 
kill a bunch of white people, blame it on black people, start a race riot. And he made friends with black people so that when they were in charge, yeah. that he would be, that he would rule them. Like this. <laughs> Manson was a crazy. big proponent of a race war. Happening. Yes. I still think Marilyn Manson would have kicked his ass. I don't know. Marilyn, <laughs> Marilyn Manson may sing a better tune. Marilyn <laughs> Charles dude, Manson would just gouge his eyes out. It's it's fucking very interesting how this dude was able to fucking do yeah, this yeah, shit. Yeah, crazy charismatic. Right, he would he would like like he's got a pimp game, dude. Yeah, like that's what I gotta tell Anthony because yeah. he respect this. He, would, respect he would be like you you you'd be at a house, right? Marilyn, uh, Marilyn I keep saying Marilyn. <laughs> Charles Manson would be there with all of his fucking congregation. He'd yeah. be like, hey. You two fuck each other. And yeah. then these two girls would just start like, fucking each other. Yeah. And he'd be like, you suck my dick. Yeah. And then you suck his dick. And then you suck each other's dick. Or I don't know. And then they would all just do it. Yeah, pretty all much. Right. So he I, I'm on make... board with the Tarantino doing something with this material. Yeah. Now, that'll be really fucked up. Yeah. Now, <laughs> like we said, whether it's based on true events or yeah, he'll, he'll play with it. How he plays yeah, with it. He's going to definitely do his own thing. I'm just excited. Uh, we get another Tarantino movie, and might be. I said "sucking dick" like at least ten times <laughs> just in the last. You have to edit some of those. Out. No, it's all staying in. Yeah. Uh, well, you also have to edit the fact that he says I should respect Charles Manson, and I go, I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got a good pimp he's game. Got good pimp game. He's got a good pimp game. Listener, I don't know how you feel about all that. It's all staying in as we take a quick break. I'm gonna play some promos, and we will come back and say more tasteless and offensive things, probably. Trivia Geeks, the Unpredictable Game Show podcast is back with a brand new season. They've got a new host, new games, and a new day and time. But that's not all. Now you can download their companion app, Triv Now, and play along in real time. Watch Carrie on YouTube as she tries to convince her partner that his dark night hasn't risen in years. Listen on Diamond Club and Alpha Geek Radio, Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern. You can also follow the show on Facebook and Twitter and get all the latest updates and showtimes. Forgive the interruption, but I believe this requires your attention. If you ever believed Captain America was on the U.S. Olympic soccer team. If you ever thought that the Winter Soldier was that brace yourselves guy on the internet. And if you ever wondered just what would a raccoon do with a machine gun. Then don't let another week pass you by without tuning into Mighty Marvel Geeks. Mighty Marvel Geeks is your show about all things Marvel. With news, rumors, commentary, and interviews. As well as our weekly recommendations on what to pick up on New Comic Book Day. Official consulting hours are between 8 and 5 every other Thursday. That's Mighty Marvel Geeks on WeebyGeeks.net, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and anywhere else you listen to podcasts. We didn't listen to our parents, and now... Well, now we get into cars with complete strangers. My name is Mike O'Connor. I drive for a rideshare company and host a weekly podcast called Can I Get a Ride? Having a stranger get into your car can be anxiety-inducing. Lucky for me, I like to talk. Listen in as I share stories of passengers from all walks of life, reflect on shared experiences, and laugh at the outrageous overheard conversations coming from my back seat. Can I Get a Ride can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, and more. Be sure to check out my website at canigetaridepodcast.com. Follow on Twitter at M-Y-K-O-C-O-N-N-O-R and on Instagram at Can I Get a Ride. I drive, we talk, I get hungry. That's life. And Hello, listener. Hey, let me ask you something, listener. Just you and me right here. Just just you and me in your ears. If you are enjoying our show, if you have been enjoying the show, there's more show to be had in a fashion where you can help us out and we help you out. You scratch our back. We'll scratch yours. We have an awesome fan club on Patreon. Just visit jockandnerd.com slash Patreon and... uh Consider supporting the show and uh, throw us a couple of bucks a month. You will get access to an RSS link with bonus episodes, a whole exclusive podcast feed with hours and hours of extra content. Now, you guys, I did something nice for the listener. Why? Our last, I, well, because I love the listener. Oh, fuck. I love you, listener. Uh, our last show, which we said. Listener, go get laid. Go, <laughs> Just look, go get laid. And if you don't, listener, it's okay. I'll still love you. Oh, my God. <laughs> our last show was the Spider-Man Homecoming Review. We had... 
a pretty awesome post show. And it, we, the, the discussion for the movie continued and we had a lot of good points and it really was part of the review. So what I've done is a twofold thing for the listener. First, the post show from the last episode is up for free on our Patreon. Oh shit. Geek mode. nerd. Visit the show notes for a link. You can listen to it. It's like 50 minutes long. Whoa. Completely Whoa, free. It was a long post show. So listener, you check this out. And if you like it, this is the shit you're going to get. You're going to get uh, uh, half an hour, 45 minutes, extra bonus content. It's a sample of all the f- awesome bonus stuff you get access to when you uh, help us out on Patreon and join our little fan community. There. Yeah. Throw us like five bucks a month or something. It will be worth your while. And thank you to all our awesome Patreon supporters. It's growing every day. We can't thank you enough. We appreciate it. Uh, back to the news a little bit. Guys. Wait, one more thing. We yes. got merch too. Go oh, buy some t-shirts. Yeah, Rugs is uh Rugs uh he's wearing a little rug boy t-shirt right now that fits his body. You can get that for your kids. I've worn that uh tank top out to music festivals. Yes, uh, Anthony represented and in Vegas. I wore it in nice. Vegas yeah, a couple times. Yeah. The douchebag tank. Just visit jockinner.com slash shop. You can pick our logo and you can put it on anything. T-shirts, hoodies, drinking bottles, bandanas, your penis. You can put it on uh Specially ordered penises. <laughs> well, you can't do that. I mean, I'll send you a sticker if you really want to put it on well, your you penis. Just tatted, just you can just get it tatted. You can just show your tattoo touched. artist. Can you draw this? Ooh, it's our faces. The first Jock and Nerd dick tattoo. <laughs> uh, we'll give you a free. We'll give you a free Patreon. I'll, 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 I'll up the ante. <laughs> yeah. If you get a Jock and Nerd dick tattoo and send it to us, <laughs> yes. I don't know if I want a photo I, of it. I, I will give you a thousand dollars. Oh my god! Oh, shit. Okay, oh. listener, the gauntlet has been thrown. But it's got to be a legit dick tattoo. It can't be photoshopped on. It, we need this confirmed. We need right. at least three witnesses uh, that that will confirm. I this. need to I see need, it uh, flaccid and hard at the same I, time. I need angles. I need everything. <laughs> I need underneath. Yeah, and it needs to be approved by like a notary public. Yeah. You need like a stamp or something. Thousand bucks. Wow, that's very generous of the jock. I'm I'm afraid to look into my emails now. <laughs> Thank you, Anthony, for send them, send you dicky pics send to show at jockandnerd Uh Let's continue a little bit with some TV news on the small screen. Godzilla fans, we're getting an animated Netflix show. We've talked about this on the past in the past. It's a movie. It, oh, it's not a series. It is a movie on Netflix, and we have a first trailer release. Visit the show notes. Play along. Pause it here, watch the trailer with us, and then we're going to talk about the trailer. Jockin' nerd! What a cock tease. Okay, so it's a very short teaser. You don't really Jockin see Jockin much. Uh, this is a the first film in a trilogy with a 2017 re- release. The first film, Godzilla, Planet of the Monsters, set to premiere in Japan in November. And then we could stream it on Netflix. Anthony, yeah. we didn't see much. What would you think of this trailer? You didn't see much. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, you got well, nothing. you want to know something that you don't have here is that there's actually an action figure that's being advertised from the new design. We from talked this, about this on the show. Did we? No, I don't think so. From no. this movie. Wow. What, what little we saw the design is Godzilla. Now, you didn't see it. It's in the He's in the background. There's kind of like a haze over him. I don't, can you even comment on, on, on the design of this Godzilla? It looks a little bit like the 2014 design. Oh, I think I saw that. Yeah. And uh, it's green. So Green? Yeah. So this is the this is the story where it's in the future and and people from Earth yeah, return bas- to Earth basically and like, it's been taken over by monsters. Yeah, so they go out to space, they come back, and then Godzilla's uh, the main dude. I'll give him charge. I'll give him this. There hasn't been many futuristic Godzilla stories. There's maybe been like three, two or three. So if they want to try a different angle, this is it. I'm going to watch it because I like anime. Okay, I like Aunt May. Okay. <laughs> I like anime and anime, so that's... and I also like uh, Godzilla. So. so, real quick, speaking of Godzilla, this weekend is G Fest. It is. It's G Fest weekend, which is weird. That like one it's of the in Chicago. It's in Chicago, but one of this is G Fest twenty four, and like it's one of the largest Godzilla fan conventions, and it's weird that and, it's in Chicago. And you live in Chicago. I live in Chicago, listener. If you go back, if you haven't, if you're a new listener, go back and check out episode one eighteen because you are fu- so G Fest is known for. Hot girls. Yes. In breaking things that aren't yours. <laughs> yes, right? and paying for them. Those are the two. So if for the listeners who have listened to 118, we went to G-Fest last year. Our buddy John Bellotti was there. We got to meet Nick Shev, who is a listener. We hung out with them. Crazy shit happened. Here's what happened today. I went down after work. But you can't just go into that with explain, not explaining what happened. Right. So last year, Imran <laughs> went to G-Fest, yes. and he fucking broke 
This statue that was like eight hundred dollar statue. Like he fucking he dumbass just bumped into this shit. It's all on the show. It was High Say Godzilla versus uh, Godzilla nineteen ninety eight American yes. TriStar Godzilla. Yeah. It was a poly resin statue that was very delicate and put. And if it was that delicate, they should have fucking oh, put a glass god. box on it. Oh my god! Because who puts a top heavy fucking statue out where someone can knock it over? But that's beside the point. Uh, Anthony's picking up hot chicks. I'm breaking shit. So the whole thing is that Imran fucking wrecked this. this and I didn't think they would let me back to God G-Fest the next year. Now, John Bellotti's in town. Nick Chef, they're back in town. After work today, I wanted to go to the hotel to say hi. Because they had come in town. They're getting this set up. And I shit you not, Anthony Ruggs. This is what happened. The minute I walked into the lobby of the Crown Plaza at Rosemont, the fucking fire alarm goes off. Oh, shit. I swear to God, it wasn't my fault. I think it was an Imran alarm because yeah, totally. it seemed to be. And Bilotti can confirm this. Like, there's a sirens, lights flashing. And I was like, hold on. This wasn't happening before Literally I walked, right in, here. walked in here. Right when I walked in, this fucking thing goes off. And I'm freaking out. I'm like, guys, this is not my fault. I did, swear did to Christ. Did SWAT team come out? Did... uh the G fe- G force came out, come out and say and like surround you and say freeze. I was like, no, I'm a nice Muslim. I'm not one of those. I'm a normal one. Like you guys a, can relax. There's like an Imran poster. Like if you see this person, sound the alarm. If he comes, I in. thought their facial recognition, expensive model, picked me up on the street. Your, your face is at every sal- oh, saloon. Jesus. Where it's just like wanted, dead, or alive. So I'm going to go. We're going to hang out this weekend, but it's already a bad start to the fucking G-Fest uh, 2017 because I set off the fire alarm. I didn't set it off. It wasn't my fault. Let, let me tell people how you broke that. Okay. You were swing. You had a mic attached to your whatever. You, what do you call that thing? Uh, the digital recorder. Digital recorder. And you kept swinging it back and forth. And the cord wrapped around this statue. Correct. And you literally yanked it down. That may have been what happened. There was also cords from my headphones. You swinging. yanked it down. I saw it happen and immediately walked away because there was a girl that you were interviewing that I thought was cute. And I told you to go interview her. Yes. Once you did that, I walked away like I didn't know who you were. You sent me over there and then and you hear it in the show. Anthony in the background going, I'll see you later. Yeah. And he walks away and I'm just like, oh, if you like uh, deliciously awkward audio, I just listen to episode 118. The best is that you had to pay for half of it. <laughs> I felt so bad that I broke some even, shit. You don't have nothing to show. I should have taken that thing home. But what was I going to do with it? It's going to sit here and collect dust. Just give it to me. I guess I you could have. I could have gave it away on the podcast. You could have offered four hundred. Yeah, probably taken it home and then fixed it your own. On your and 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 then turned around and sold it for eight hundred. <laughs> Pay my money back. Oh shit! Damn it, Anthony. Where were you last year when I needed this? Uh, no, I to be found. I was so <laughs> embarrassed. He was I, getting laid. I was so embarrassed at that point. I was <laughs> like, holy shit. <laughs> You were embarrassed. I was. Oh, sweating. I know you were embarrassed, I was, but I was like, oh my god, I don't, I don't want. To I mean, I'm white, but I was like whiter. Like I, yeah. I was just sheet white. Anyways, hey, we'll rec- we'll record some shit at G Fest. We'll give you our recap. I don't know if we'll do like another whole episode. Probably won't do a whole episode, but we'll get, we'll tell you what happened because yeah. for sure some shit's gonna happen. What? What's com- What's coming out? That's what people are gonna talk about this year at G Fest. That's a good question. We well, got the animated movie. Animated movie. Okay, because last got, year was was shit, shit. right. You got Godzilla two that's in the works. Oh yeah, yeah. there's right, leaks. Fine. There's leaks coming out of that, and uh, you know Kong just came out okay. this year, All right, so there's he's going to be big. I stand corrected. And now Shin that Godzilla is it's coming out on uh, DVD. It's, it's coming soon, out on DVD in August, in August, and they'll probably have a lot of Shin oh. toys because I know last year when we went, Shin Godzilla stuff sold out right away. Yeah, we so there'll be a lot more Shin Godzilla. Shin. There's already artwork. There'll be Shin I'm Godzilla artwork. I'm waiting for artwork. upper thigh Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer funny bone Godzilla. I think we've lost all our listeners because we're going so niche at this point that no one gives <laughs> Listen, a Listen, you kaiju fans, you you feel us. You the, feel us. The jokes still work. It's no, not. no, it's not that. It's like, <laughs> When we get into Shin, it's Nobody like, gives a shit. Who has really seen Shin Godzilla other than me, Rugboy, and Bilotti, and Imran? Look, let it be known that we reviewed a Japanese movie. We, went, we did a whole show. That's pretty it. progressive yeah. for like a geek podcast. Three people watched it it's not in english it's full of text there's a lot of reading not only that it's like nothing like you've ever seen if you're it's like a different American godzilla cinema. yeah not only that it's just the format is yeah different. yeah well it's a movie for the japanese yeah so anyways Let's move on moving on we have another trailer i got want you guys to watch and it is of a character that i i've loved ever since i was a teenager and it's the tick the giant blue goofy self-aware kind of parody superhero of superheroes He's had a cartoon. He's had a previous incarnation. Is this a movie? This is an Amazon TV show. That'll be on Amazon. And they had a pilot. It got picked up. 
They have retooled a lot. They changed the suit we have. Instead of Patrick Warburton, we have Peter Serafinowitz. Peter Serafinowitz. Serafinowitz. I don't know how to say his name. Uh, and also, Jackie Earl Haley is the villain in this. Oh, nice. Uh, listener, once again, pause the show. Watch the trailer in the show notes like we're going to do right now. And we'll let you know what we think. Talking nerd. Okay, so I like the tick. This is a new iteration of the tick, but th- there was like the jokes weren't funny. There was a- I was very underwhelmed by it. It is trailer. underwhelming. It's it's weird, is it? So this take on the character is different because usually he's like way over the top weird. And now they put him in with like guns and try to make it in in, in more in the real world. I don't know if this this idea can uh, can fly now. I think that this. This only works in animation. It doesn't work live action. It just never will. So. Anthony? As a non-fan of the tick, I, yeah. was, I thought that was garbage. Yeah. I, I, yeah. There was nothing about that, that I'd want to watch. No, not really. And you have like people the jo- in well, Here's suits. the thing. Yeah. Here's, I know it's a play on like superheroes. It's supposed right? to be a satire, right? Nothing about that. You didn't hear me laugh once. No, no, what me was either. There that? was nothing funny about that. So that's concerning. It's, and it's going to be a comedy, right? It's supposed to be supposed like to be a dark funny. comedy. It's yeah. a silly live action series, but I don't know. This trailer was underwhelming. I I think I agree with it. And it's disappointing because I think there's potential there, but maybe you're right, Rugs. It can only be done in animation. The tick only works in the medium that it's in. I don't know if it works as a live action thing. It just does it. But, uh, you know, Ben Edlund is writing this, the creator of The Tick. He's still around. He's been writing I Gotham. He's been working in TV for I, I this whole time. I don't give a shit. <laughs> it, 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 something about it is off. Even the pilot, what, the only thing I did like is that they showed that shot where he's falling and there's the American flag. And it reminds me of that moment in the, it's the, the classic moment in the first issue. Listen, when you watch the uh, Tick animated series, that's, it's, it's so good. brilliant. Yes. It's brilliant. Like, it's literally. Miles above what I just saw. Yeah. What I felt like I saw there. So it seems like they're going for like, you know, the smart, like dark superhero. Like they're like trolling superheroes. Yes. Right? Yes. But what I saw there. Yes. Honestly seemed like a sea level direct to video porno. <laughs> a little, was a little no porn, bit. It's right. Because like it's like core, bad, bad porn. acting. Yeah. And not funny. I, the not funny part is what bugged me the most. I was like, I didn't laugh once. I, so I'm surprised that Amazon actually picked this up. Like, I, I wouldn't be surprised if series. like this came out if this came out on DVD at Blockbuster, which doesn't exist anymore. But if it was it was labeled the Dick, yeah, I would I'd be like, this makes sense. <laughs> well, look, here's the Tick humor. Like that. So you saw that scene where he's falling and he grabs the flag and it and then it, it doesn't do anything. So he jumps out. Like in the comic book, there's a scene and he's always very over the top. He jumps off a building and he's like. I will bounce off that American flagpole and land safely to the ground. And he grabs it and it snaps. And he's like, oh, now I'll just harmlessly bounce off the sidewalk. And he slams into the sidewalk and he gets up and he just goes, gravity is a harsh mistress. Like, it's that kind of. uh, Who was the the sidekick? Arthur. His name is Arthur. He's the moth. The moth. Yeah, he's a moth. I guarantee you put the cartoon on. The cartoon is great. Did you think the Patrick Warburton show worked? Better than this. Yes, I agree. I think Warburton was a better take and like the overall campiness, but that was also a different time of like superhero stuff. Like I think they're trying to relate this to like this gritty superhero. I don't know, have. man. That's a th- they've done it. They've they've done it best in the animated series, yeah. and then that anything else is going to pay. Disappointing off. listener. Let me know if you're a Tick fan and if you thought this. I- I'm you're glad you guys this. reacted this way because I really thought you guys were going to be those hipster comic book no. fans that were going to be like. Man, that looked awesome, no. and I was like, "Dude, I didn't see shit that I would have wanted to no. watch there." No. I, you know, it did. It did if not I if I do like once. something, I'm usually right. Okay. But like, <laughs> I just think it's interesting in the terms of development of what they've been trying to do with this character. But I, this is not. It's not. Good. No, this is it's not, not good. Is, unless it like completely better, grows over time, better or, or worse than the Inhumans. <laughs> That's a tough one. Right? I mean, like, I would give it to the Inhumans. I would but. give, I would give the Inhumans a slight edge, a little bit, because just a little. Bit. I know the Tick is trying to be funny, and yeah. I didn't laugh throughout the entire yeah. trailer. And the Inhumans maybe unintentionally. I, I might un- and unintentionally laugh <laughs> at the Inhumans. Yes, the Tick here. Well, the Tick are powerless. Oh Jesus, po- mm, powerless did not make me laugh. Once. But you watched the entire season, so I would watch <laughs> the Tick then. If I watched all the powerless. 
This, what about you, Rugs? Tick or the first episode you saw of Powerless? This tick? Yeah. yeah. This uh, tick. I'd be inclined to watch one episode of The Tick. Over Powerless. Because it's actually The Tick, then yeah. some bullshit that they made up to try and make a show. <laughs> I think I would have watched another episode of Powerless. Over the really? Tick. Oh, my God, Tick. I mean, did you hear that, Amazon? That's not good. That show is canceled. Whoa. All right. Well, wh- I don't like the guy playing The Tick. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I, don't, I thought he was going to be good, but there's he's no. There's no charisma. No. Maybe they didn't show it enough. Like, yeah. I will give it a couple of episodes. Because I, I can think to the, the the cartoon where the tick has the big white yes, eyes. Yes. And he's like this, like, oh, like, oh, yeah, like this goofy, over goofy the top looking guy. guy. And yeah. this guy is like playing it off as his like understated cool, but he's not understated and cool. Yeah. It's a different... He just look. he looks like an idiot. Well, but that's also kind of the tick is like this guy in a big blue suit. It looks like but an idiot. I, I feel like you got to be a little bit more char- like you got to be stupid charismatic. Yeah. Yeah. It's got to be a little bit bigger. You got to be like uh, the other guy, Lloyd in Dumb and Dumb. Not uh, not Jim Carrey's. Character. Oh, uh, yeah. His, uh, who played that? Fucking. Uh, From Arachnophobia. Uh, Jeff Daniels. Jeff Daniels. Jeff Daniels. Like that kind goofy. of guy. Yeah, yeah. Like Goofy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. All right. Fuck the take. I'll give it a couple episodes just because I want to see. What Do you have is. Amazon Prime? No, but Am- I can watch it. Not Amazon Prime. Was that it? A- yeah. It's Amazon I have Optimus Video. Prime. <laughs> I have Optimus Prime. <laughs> It's Amazon Video, so you have to pay. Right. Well, if you pay for Prime, you get the video. Got it, got it. But there's other ways to watch things. Uh, finally, we're going <laughs> to wrap up the news segment. It's a little bit of news about San Diego Comic Con. It's it's coming next this week. This is a big week for San Diego Comic Con. This is a it's big It's not week. a Comic Con. It's not. It's called. It should be called San Diego Pop Culture Convention. Yeah. That, there's nothing about comics this anymore. Will, we'll, we'll, discuss, we'll get into that. We'll get this into that. Later. Now, Anthony, would you be surprised to hear. That Marvel's going to give a 90-minute presentation oh, yeah. at Hall H. How long are these usually? They're usually like an hour. So actually, before we get into Marvel, WB is also doing something as well. Okay. So we'll get WB news. But 90 minutes is like 30 minutes longer. I am not surprised just because they got Thor Ragnarok to promote, Black Panther, Infin- Ant-Man and the Wasp, yeah. and Infinity and War. Infinity. And they always kind of like go all out for San Diego Comic-Con. So when the first Avengers came out, they had the whole cast come out. A lot of rumors are coming out that they're going to have the Infinity War. Everybody, that means everybody yeah, is going to be everybody. on the stage. in a. Ba- it's going to look like the McGregor Mayweather press conference. Oh, shit. Only, uh, <laughs> only a lot less shit talking. No, no shit talking. <laughs> <laughs> Red Boy, don't die over there and get you. It's just going to be like Black Panther's going to be yelling at Winter Soldier. And like Loki comes out and goes, yeah, pussy. <laughs> me, me and my buddies were trying to go to this this year. Oh, really? Yeah, we couldn't though. It sold was, out. It's sold out. I mean, it's just this is a big year for Comic Con. Well, I'll tell you, somebody who's not going, a vendor, a comic book vendor that has been selling comic books since 1969. They've been going to San Diego Comic Con for 44 years straight. Woo. Mile High Comics out of Denver, Colorado, in their newsletter, uh, explained. Why they're not returning. Me, can I explain it? Yes. So having been the only guy here that's been to San that's Diego Comic Con, they are – comic vendors are now like in the back. So Way in the back. They don't get a lot of foot traffic. So they were mad about that. Yes. And apparently last year they had – they didn't have their stuff set up on time and they got zero apology, zero sympathy from San Diego Comic Con. And San Diego Comic Con has been raising their prices on being a vendor there every year, and they're not seeing the ROI on their investment. Listen to these numbers. They said my, their first little one table booth in 1973 cost $40 to rent for the weekend. When we received our booth renewal for last year, our cost for our 70 feet of space had been raised to over $18,000. Oh, shit. Which was more than the previous year, which was 16500 That's insane. And they said, like you said, the la- final straw was that they, the shipping got fucked up. They're sitting there with nothing, waiting for, and nobody apologize. And like, okay. they're like, you know what? We're done. But that's that's crazy. How many? How many other? I mean, if more vendors eventually decide to do this, they may change the name of San Diego Comic Con to nah, San Diego Pop Culture they, Media they, Con. They ain't changing the name. Should name it San Diego Shaka Con. <laughs> Can, can let me I rock you? I we've already discussed this off air. Yeah, but let me just explain for the listener. Yeah. So someone that I went there in 2011. Yeah, as a casual fan. Yeah, and I'll be completely honest. I did not give a shit about the comics. Did you even see any comic books? No, you know, I yeah. I bought comic books. I yeah. didn't go to the old like Mile High. I didn't go to those vendors. I went to. I just bought 
trades. I didn't give a fuck. They and then so it's not. It, here's the thing: if you're going to San Diego Comic Con, they have Sony, they have Marvel, they have DC, they have Hasbro, they have everybody there with these amazingly giant interactive booths, right? With fucking hot women and exclusive toys. How are you not going to go? Why there? are you going to like? They're, they don't. They're, it's not for comics anymore. It's but, not that. They were also saying the that there's satellite events happening there's outside. Sat- there is events that are people. free. Yes, outside of Comic Con. So you don't even need a ticket no. to go to these awesome events now. And you're throwing in. You just mentioned Marvel doing a 90 minute presentation. Yeah. You have to go to that. You presentation. You gotta wait six hours. To you get gotta into that get. You gotta thing. line up in the morning. You gotta line up at like four a.m. What a fucking clusterfuck. Yeah. So there, comics are not. No one goes there for comics. Well, the, the it sounds is, like a horrible experience. Well, no, it's fun. It, it is, is fun. fun. It but is you fun. have to have some sympathy for the people that this used to be a vendor event, right? This used to be a place where you could sell comics, you could sell your products, sell your toys, sell the stuff that you have curated. It started in the basement of a hotel, right? Yeah. So from it's going gone from that and all of these other fucking businesses have co-opted their platform that they've built up yep, yep. over years yep. to be a multimedia event. Right. All right. Those people have every right to be pissed off. And it's kind of a fuck you to the oh, people I, who did I, the footwork. To I don't to this. They, 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 they tried to make an event from scratch. They could probably pull it off, but would it be to the degree of what it is? Because before Hollywood was there, there were people going to this con. Right. right. Before that, that, this was a religious experience for every comic book collector before Hollywood decided to fucking skull fuck it in the face. All right. <laughs> so you have to at least acknowledge that these vendors yeah. have been building this convention for years. If it wasn't for them. Yes. You wouldn't have a Marvel 90 minute Hall H presentation. No. no, I acknowledge that. But. Times that are a change. I'm yeah. That that's that's my point. Is I acknowledge and I and I think that's sh- shitty that San Diego Comic Con treated them disrespectfully. I'm just saying from a fan's perspective, as far as foot traffic and concerns, they there it's there's fandom things. Has changed. You, yeah, fandom yeah, has changed, yeah. and fandom at this point going to San Diego Comic Con is looking at what is the biggest and brightest thing I can go. And to. you'll go Ooh, and, shiny, and, and you are not going to. Sorry, Mile High, but you're not going to Mile High Comics and going, I'm going to talk to that 45-year-old dude about comics. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Well, the thing is is that this is the deal with the devil that's yeah. happened. It's mm-hmm. like you you want your industry to, to be become – To be mainstream. And this you, is what happens. You want to get these character, characters out there to every little kid out there. It's such a crazy double-edged sword and that we're living in right now. So now you basically sell your soul right. yeah. and – You lose the soul. You lose – yeah, you lose all the things – that really the people who support this industry for years are they're losing out. And yeah. I feel bad. It's a changing of the guard. And it's I'm part of that guard. Yeah. yeah. I'm part of those guys that 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 funded this industry for years. And I'm seeing it now to go to every fucking guy with a cell phone and who could just Google bullshit and yeah. think that they're a comic book expert. You know, it's like. Do you split it off into two events, or is that no, no, it's no, going to dilute it? Nobody's no, capitalism, go. man. Mm. It's no, just no one's gone. Survival mm. of who who can pay the money. So to your point, rugs. I think once this bubble bursts and it dies down, it's going to go back. And then, it, like you said, they were there before. I don't. I don't know. If, I don't afterwards. know if the bubble will ever burst. Really? Just because there's so much material that Hollywood Every, can yeah. draw from, and yeah. Hollywood is yeah. not making new stuff. But let let yeah. let's just let me just put this out there. All right, you have Godzilla Fest. That's a, one of the things about it is it's for fans by fans. Yes, Hollywood doesn't fucking even know it exists. Yeah, they, they don't, don't give they, a shit. They give yeah. two shits. All right, yeah. that's a fan thing. You want to go where the fans are? There's yeah. conventions for those fans. You go to Heroes Con. In that's Charlotte. true. You know, you can find a con that's a real fan con. You have the heroes and villains that Amel is stop, doing kind of thing. Stop sucking the dick of, of San, San Diego. Diego. Yeah. yeah, that's all. If you're a real fan. Just stop sucking their dick. There's two. Um... Oh man, I forgot one of my points. I said sucking a dick again. again. Yeah, yeah, you, 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 and you fucking <laughs> and men in black mind blo- mind work me. It's just like these are not the George you're looking for. What am I for. talking about right now? Uh, uh, no, there's there is there's a couple things too. Is San Diego? I'm not defending them. Yeah, but when I I, I see why they're ignoring Mile High. Yeah, because they're like. Shit. So unnecessary. Hasbro the, Hasbro needs what's the return Hasbro needs them? their fucking lights set up. Yeah, I don't give a fuck about Mile High. What's the return? You for know, them? I, yeah. I what 
XYZ wow. toy company needs their shit set up. Yeah. Like, they don't give a fuck. And then here's the other thing that San Diego Comic Con's kind of weird with is it's not this event that is very inviting. And I, what I mean by that is it's hard to buy a ticket. Yeah. If you buy a ticket, yeah. you can't go. Yeah. You can't resell that ticket. You can't resell it? You can't resell I was, it. I was, and I was it's non refundable. It's non refundable. I, I was on Twitter, Itch. right? Yeah. yeah. And Nicola Scott. Yeah, one of the artists for Wonder Woman. Yeah, she can't fucking find a room for San Diego. Oh, Jesus! Because it's all booked up. Jesus! So, well, and it's one of those things where, like, what do you do? You San to- Diego is considered now the Holy Grail. Right? Yeah, you go to San Diego Comic Con, and you're like, this is Mecca. Yeah. So you get three, four days or whatever. It's not enough time. No. There's not enough time to even visit the vendors or visit the artists. They don't. They don't. If you want to do the literally, if you want to do the Hall H or the TV thing, that's a whole day. Paint, a whole it's it could, it. you could take up your entire weekend jesus you, you don't See, you might not even step in the convention nothing center. about this sounds like an enjoyable experience uh, uh it's I fun mean, it might be cool but like you're just not gonna go there for the reasons yeah, that you think that you're going there you, you, you're not going there to buy yeah. um old school comics you're yeah. buying you're buying once in a lot you're buying comic-con exclusive collectibles uh-huh. you're meeting you're getting autographs you're yeah. interacting in these interactive zones and you're seeing movie panels and tv panels and you're 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 several celebrity, celebrity chasing, basically. Wow. It, it is, San, literally, San Diego for that weekend turns into like L.A. Yeah. yeah it turns whole, into like Hollywood. And it's like a small town, too, yeah. isn't it? The whole that, town. Like you go there and buildings are plastered with Comic-Con and like TV ads and movies. I've ads. heard a lot of comments. It's like nerd central. For I've heard weekend. a lot of people commenting that it's outgrowing the city of San Diego itself. It might be. Where it can't even handle it. But, Ruggs, I think you're right. I think we just need to support. There's Dragon Con. There's Tampa Bay. The there's San stuff. Francisco. The there's uh, uh, Indianapolis. There's tons of cons for. for yeah, I mean, the, the thing, it's like this convention is now not a comic book convention. Yeah. Is New York getting that way? Yeah. yeah. Is that done also? Because it's owned no. by the same company. Oh. San Diego and New York put on the, uh, not, the same company. Not yet. Uh-huh. It's getting there. Okay. Yeah, the same company that puts on San Diego also does New York Comic Con. Well, look, uh, and of course, we're going to be excited to see what news comes out. And we'll, yeah. well, well, that's the thing too. Like, they're de- they're de- they're revealing news yeah. that is exclusive to San Diego. Yeah. If you're there in attendance, you're like, this is the best thing ever. You, those people don't give a fuck about Mile High Comics. But the thing is, why go there? Because all the stuff comes out eventually. Like, what is the point? Well, I mean, it's the a- a- argument of why go to a live sporting event when you can watch it on TV. Although, remember last year, they wasn't there like Spider-Man footage and it never got out. Mm-hmm. So they do do some things where they can keep it under wraps, which is... The stuff I saw didn't ever got out. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. All right, they'll, well, they'll show footage look, where it's like them like with the wires and you can see like... Uh, yeah, the we'll do our annual San Diego Comic Con wrap up. Remember, we've done it two years in a yeah, row. Yeah. We'll do uh, we'll do it again when the news is late and you've already read it and uh, nobody yeah, cares. Yeah, it'll anymore. be great. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I wanted to uh, end the show with a couple of recommendations and some things I saw. You guys, if you have any recommendations, feel free. We'll go we'll go around the room. Uh, I saw the movie, and these aren't comic book superhero things; they're just good quality content stories. The movie, The Big Sick. Is by about Pakistani comedian Kumail Nanjani, who's on Silicon Valley. And uh, basically, it's a semi autobiographical story about his life. He moved from Pakistan when he was 14, lived in Chicago, started doing stand up comedy. Uh, and the movie, in the movie, he drives an Uber and he meets a white girl at a stand up comedy show. This is all in the movie. Now, is she racist and trying to brainwash people? She was. No, she wasn't. <laughs> and this movie is written by him and his wife. So this is all Let's like. Get out. No, no. Oh, that's the other movie. <laughs> Uh, so while he's da- he starts dating this white girl, Emily, uh, the whole time he's going to dinners at his at his mom's house and his family's traditional. And every time he's there, the doorbell rings and a, 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 an available Pakistani woman just happened to drop by. The mom's like, oh, she just happened to drop by. And they, they leave a little picture, little bio bio data uh, to hook him up. And he just goes home and he puts it in this cigar box. Right. So, of course, the girl finds this box and she freaks out. And he and he he's like, oh yeah, we kind of have an arranged marriage. They break up. They uh, he doesn't talk to her for a while. And then he gets a phone call from her friend. That girl is sick in the hospital. You're gonna spoil the entire show. No, but this is a real story. The whole, here's that. Here's where I'll stop. He they put her into a medically induced coma. At which point he has to call her parents and meet her parents for the first time, and they know everything. Now, first of all, this is an amazing, beautifully, beautifully written, amazingly acted rom com. 
The real thing is why I recommend this is because it's very close to what me and the wife went through. Minus the coma. You have a wife? And the stand-up comedy. I thought you were her wife. Now, at any point during this thing, does she call him a curry person and he gets offended? No, not like on Masters (laughs) of None. There's none of that. So I went to see it with my wife. I thought you were hermaphrodite. What? Yeah. What does that mean even? Oh, shit. Yeah, both sets of genitalia. <laughs> That's the best of both worlds. <laughs> Here's the thing. I took my wife to see this. And while she could relate to Emily's point of view, I could relate to Camille's point of view. But then we kind of saw each other, how they reacted to each other's point of view. She kind of got to understand a little bit of traditional family life. I got to understand where, why it was shitty to do that to someone. To, like, so here's the thing. <laughs> my wife, and we, we were living together. My mom had no idea. I, she, my wife had not met my mom. We were living together. And I and I was like, look, I'll tell her. And I told her eventually, but it was, <laughs> I had laryngitis. I lost my voice. That's, so you decided to tell her on the day you had laryngitis. That's what I told my mom is when I didn't have a voice. Man, I'm Because she just, and, and for a day, my mom reacted like Kumail's mom. In the movie, she like kind of disowns him. For a day, my mom was pissed. But then I was like, She's not going to disown me. Who's going to fucking do all the shit for her? Like, I take out her garbage. I go there every day. Mm-hmm. There's no way you're pulling the disowned card because yeah, you need, you're in the power position. You need me. So I just, <laughs> I gave her some time. And now everybody's kind of cool. But, like, for me to watch a movie and it, sh- it shows something that I went through that I didn't think anybody could understand or relate to the situation where you're a, a son of an immigrant religious family and you date someone who you shouldn't and you marry them, you want to marry them and they want you to marry a Pakistan. I didn't think anybody could, and to watch this and to see the people react so to this was do amazing. You, do you feel like that there was more kind of resistance from your mom or from her parents? Oh, definitely. Oh, from my mom. Yeah. I, I knew her, her parents loved me. So, her mom loved me. My, so my that's, parents isn't that family crazy? Loves me. But that's what, that's, that's a crazy thing because you don't really think about it as, you think about always oh, the white people are the bad. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and in this case, and kind of in the in the movie, well, the 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 her parents in the movie are great. They're played by Ray Romano and Holly Hunter. Uh, amazing performance. Those they're great together. But it's I don't know. It's equal blame on both sides. Like you're really it's a, it's completely my fault for being shitty and not, <laughs> I was afraid. You got to understand. I was afraid to tell my mom. Now listen, sometimes you just gotta fucking do it, like. And for anybody who's out there who's thinking about doing something that's going to piss their parents off, as long as you're not really hurting anybody, they'll, fuck them. That's what I think. You. That's what I love you. No, I mean, like, not fuck them, like, whatever, but you're doing nothing wrong. Like, fuck your mom and the asshole? No. No. You no. suck her dick. <laughs> <laughs> now you guys suck each other's dick. No. How does that work? I'm talking about, like, any time that you're thinking about something that's going to offend a parent, it's their problem. If you're not doing anything that's hurting somebody, and if you're if if everything's out of love yeah. and there's nothing yeah. wrong with what you're doing, then that's their problem. You should have hit the rug down button, but you didn't know. <laughs> too late. You had no idea. I didn't know you were going to go into you a didn't rug know. down. You, you, you didn't know we were going. It life was lessons. two sentences. Terrific. <laughs> but look, just go see the movie if you've been thinking about it. You're on the fence. It's a wonderful movie. I had really real dialogue, really well, really funny. Charming. I feel like I've already seen the movie with your fucking synopsis. I want to know what you guys think of like this. I would situation. like it better if it was called instead of the big sick, the big dick. <laughs> of course you would. Yeah. <laughs> that's then, a that's the porn version. Then it'd be the softcore porn that I was always speaking imagining. of softcore porn. Yeah, you have a recommendation, Rugs? Well, you have it right here, written up on there. Yes, on the, the next right one, Glow on Netflix. I've heard so much. So everyone loves that. So the same day I saw the big sick, I came home and I binged all of Glow in one sitting. Is that good? Glow is like this thing that in a million years I shouldn't have liked watching. But I fucking loved it. It's like an origin story of these lady wrestlers. Uh, You guys aren't the only ones. Even Joe from work is like, you got to watch Glow. Mark Maron is perfect in the role as the director of the show. My favorite part is when Mark Maron is like looking the main character over and he's like, I don't know if you're good looking or not good looking. (laughs) I can't tell yet. And then he like sends, he just insults these girls. He's so brutal. It's great. And and that's how he really was in real life. The character is based on this uh, real director, um, Simber. Okay. And uh, I, I don't know if his name is Mark or Ted Simber. I don't know. His, the, I know his last name is Simber. He was a black exploitation film director. Okay. That, that makes was sense. famous for making these black exploitation films. And uh, he was in charge of getting this shit in shape, this glow thing. Yeah. He was like a huge tyrant. 
Wow. So it's it's an original. It's like based on those people. I, I hear we see some boobies. There's a, you see Allison Bree's boobies. You see a lot you of other boobies. You see the boobies. main girl's boobies. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Completely naked. I, Anthony, you would love the show. It's a lot of fun. There's boobies. And it's got re- surprising characters. Like there's a producer character that you think would be a douchebag, slimy producer. But he's behind the project the most. He has a lot of heart. I, I'm with I'm with Ruggs in that it's hard for me to put on this, this show just because the concept is something that I would never like. But it, it works. A woman's. Gorgeous ladies of wrestling. Gorgeous ladies of wrestling. I don't. I Lit, never would have watched. That. I. I am surprised. I liked it, but I was like, "Wow, this is really good." Okay, it takes place in the. 80s I, w- I will throw it on just because I've had too many people. The say first it. season is great, and it ends with them shooting the pilot episode. So it is like an origin story of these characters, and hopefully next season they can go into the I'll show. Tell you more. What I tell you, what's great about it? Um, these episodes are half hour long. Yes, yeah. it's very so digestible. They're, so they're very like succinct. Yes. They're like, there's not a lot of fat in any of this. Going ten episodes is and perfect. It, you could just blaze right through it. That's what I said. That I watched all of it. Yeah, the thirty minutes thing is it's perfect. Yeah, yeah, it's very appealing. Uh, I just think I think if you watch a couple, like you won't be able to stop. I almost wanted them to be an hour long. Yeah, I wanted more, and uh, that's so, such a genius yeah, thing. Yeah. No, great, great. Have writing. you ever seen Love? Well, since we're, no, you told me about that, and uh, it's like an anthology. No, no, that's different. Love is is, is it's a really fucked up emotion. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's about this nerd. It's like imagine this, love is hard. I'm like, you know what? Imran's like a real big nerd. Yeah. Imagine a guy nerdier than Imran. I know oh, that's fuck. not possible. Okay. Now imagine this guy mo- is moves to L.A. and becomes like a. A dude that's involved in Hollywood in some some way, like he's like he works in the Hollywood industry, and uh, he meets this fucking girl that is a nut, but she likes him for some reason. And oh wait, I have watched some of this. My wife was watching it, and yeah. it was really good. And, it's the girl from Communities in it. Yes, yes, I've seen this. It is good. And it is she good. Likes him for some reason, but like. Fucks him over. Yeah. And he's like such a nice guy. He, he takes it. He just fucking just keeps getting ran up the Ho- ass by this girl. Hoping that she'll come around yeah. after her bad relationship. And she's and like a complete piece of shit. She is a mess and just makes bad yeah. decisions. And he's like the nice guy that the girl and is that's not going to in the same kind of vein as Glow where yeah. it's a half hour long. Yeah. Love is very and then And, they, and you just, can just plop. This is yeah. Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. Love? Yeah. Okay. You might not like it, but I, I really did enjoy it. The first season, anyway. Uh, I have one more. Anybody else want to recommend anything you've been watching? I don't remember if I've recommended this on the show or not, but you guys have heard of Cinema, Cinema Sins? Yes. Cinema Wins. I, we talked about this. It might have Last been on the post show. On the post show. Yeah. Cinema Wins is just the opposite of Cinema Sins. Yeah, it's on YouTube. It's basically the same format as Cinema Sins, except... They highlight all the fucking good things. You know what? We need that positivity in our lives. You need positivity. Especially nowadays. And I will also throw in, so we'll go jockey on this. Everyone's talking about Mayweather McGregor. Yeah. If this fight doesn't get canceled due to injury, which it has been like two or three times. Oh, really? Cormier versus Jones, UFC 214, is going to be the tits. Really? Because John Jones and Daniel Cormier, the shit talk between them has been amazing. This is a rematch. John Jones is coming off a suspension due to coke, uh, due to steroids, and he's also the Martian Manhunter. That's John Jones. John, John, John Jones is the, the best. Martian John Manhunter. Jones is the best mar- mixed martial artist in the world, but he doesn't have the belt. Is he the tall, long, lanky one? He's, he's the, the tall, he's the best mixed martial man- manhunter. That's right. He's, <laughs> all, he's the best mixed martial hand manhunter <laughs> man in the world. Hunter. He is uh, fighting Daniel Cormier. Yeah, if who, I could get that out right, it would have been brilliant. <laughs> who is a former Olympian who he's already beat. Okay. But Daniel Cormier has the championship belt because he won the belt when John Jones was suspended due to uh, being an asshole. Basically. Oh, wow. And so there's a lot of history, a lot of great. beef, Listen to this a lot of cocaine sh- trying to be cleared out of the system. Talk. Daniel Cormier. So at one point, John Jones was like, um, like making fun of Daniel Cormier. And Daniel Cormier is like, no, you're not making fun of me because... I've been sober for more than 14 oh, months, shit. you fucking dick. Oh, I actually can be sober. So <laughs> is that, It's almost as good as McGregor calling out Mayweather for it, it, not being able to read. It's, here's why it's better. That was fucked up. Here's why it's better. Because these guys actually don't like each other, yeah. whereas McGregor and Mayweather are putting on a show. You think they go off for a drink afterwards, McGregor or Mayweather, after these press conferences? I think they will, after the fight, if no one is seriously injured, they will toast to their... Hundreds of millions. There's to all our money, huh? Yeah, let's job. do this again. Let's do this again. Fucking wow. 
What a fucking, uh, that's a work. That's called a work. Okay. You I know what that's called? Yeah. Nick, Nick Diaz or Nate Diaz. Yeah. Nick Diaz. Have you heard of him? UFC fighter. Yeah. Very popular guy. He'll call, he calls that. The wolf, pot smoker. He calls that wolf tickets. Wolf tickets. a promoter selling you wolf tickets. Is you the boy who cried wolf? Oh. It's shit that's, it's promoter speak. It's like, this is really good. This isn't really what's happening here. I'm just fucking promoting. It's, it's hype, good. y'all. It's, it's hype. hype. Hype as rug boy. Uh, and man, they, and they brought the hype. There's a lot of hype in movies these days. That's wolf tickets, baby. Man, yeah, they, those are all the <laughs> fucking 90% of the movies that come out are fucking wolf tickets. Yeah, there you go. That's Transformers wolf tickets. is nothing but wolf yeah. tickets. No, that's, it's like, uh, man, Wonder Woman was the first Oh, Female oh, ever. All that That's shit. wolf tickets. Yeah. Spider Man Homecoming is the best, best Spider Man now. Wolf tickets. Wolf tickets. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and over. You want to know what's getting a lot? Of, you know what's getting hyped though? Yeah. What? Uh, Valerian. Really? Yeah. Really? No. I've not. Actually, I haven't. I saw is one Val- trailer. Did that already? It came out? I don't know if it came out yet, but Valerian? it's getting like jizzed on by people who have seen it. Is anybody inter- Are you guys. Are you rugs no. interested in seeing that? I will. I love fucking Luke Bassan. Like, it, there's no tomorrow. It is Luke Bassan. So is Valerian a? Oh, it's coming out next it's week. Based off something? It's a comic book. Yeah. Okay. It's coming out next week, July twenty first. So. Oh, that's gonna get swallowed. This is a tough week for anything. Yeah. No, this it's month gonna is... get mowed over. Yeah. It's not even gonna exist. We said it's before gonna it's be gonna John be John Carter. Yeah, we said that before. It's gonna be like oh, yeah, a John Carter that, deal. Yeah. Uh, last thing I want to recommend is a, is a show on Showtime called "I'm Dying Up Here." Showtime also the promoter of Mayweather McGregor. Uh, also, uh, McGregor went and cursed out the vice president. And she's like. Fuck you, Showtime, you he, weasels. He called him a weasel. Why? Because they cut his mic off? He claims that they cut his mic off. <laughs> he was like, fuck you, Mayweather. Fuck you, well, Showtime. Sh- here, just a little quick back. Showtime is in business with Floyd Mayweather. Yes. Mayweather so Productions. They, so they have a bias towards Floyd. Oh, Mayweather. of course. Because, yeah. okay. Oh, so he's got the in with Showtime. Right. Interesting. But yeah. I'm well, sure Dana White isn't upset that they are, it's going to be on Showtime and they can get on that. Dana White's making money. He's fine. This show called I'm Dying Up There, it's it's about a comedy club in the 70s in Los Angeles. It's really fucking good. It's all about uh like uh the female comics and trying to get the Johnny Carson show gigging at small open mics. At one point, uh Richard Pryor shows up. A guy playing Richard Pryor comes in and and does some and he that guy's not bad. It's actually a really I'm good show. I'm going to check that out. That sounds great. I, if you love uh, anything about stand-up comics. I love stand-up. Especially the period. The jokes are good and the characters are great. Uh, I'm dying up there. Check, I'm dying up here. Check it out. I love. Good stuff. I love comedy. I didn't know what it was. I just started I, watching it. And it's a very good show. I actually started watching something that I really liked. I didn't expect to like it as much as I did. Uh, Narcos. Uh, every, a lot of people have recommended Narcos. Narcos. Is very highly recommended. Yes. Yeah. Um, if you want to see fucking Pablo Escobar, That's the Escobar story. fucking do some crazy ass shit, yeah. it's very well acted. It's got subtitles. If you're not a subtitles person, fuck you. <laughs> but it's got a lot. But it, you know what? I feel like I, I know better Spanish now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's educational yeah. also. There was a bit like three or four years ago where at work we would make we would talk about cocaine hippos. And I think that is a Pablo Escobar thing. Cocaine hippos. Yeah. Where he would transport the cocaine. I know cocaine cowboys. That's yeah. a great documentary. Cocaine hippos. Yeah, I've heard that too. He he transported cocaine in the hippos? It's it's, it's like a oh, it's a phrase. mule, like a yeah, mule, yeah, like a drug mule. Cocaine hippos. I gotta check out narcos. I kinda I love that shit. I mean I love all that. You that love period. cocaine. It's, it's so good. good. I love cocaine and the whole story and around the cocaine. first two seasons tell the whole story and you could just stop after that. And it's all based on uh Oh yeah, it's uh, they got fucking footage and shit. Wow. Holy shit. Yeah. All right. That's all good recommendations, people. Keep yourselves busy trying to watch all the shit. All right, let's close out with a couple of uh, feedback from the listener. We got a lot of emails. Uh, I'm going to share this one from Super Patron Joe Henry, who pledged at a very high tier. Joe, we need to get you on the show. We got to get you on the show because the tier you pledged at, we can't thank you enough for supporting the show and listening, gets you on the show. You support us, give us 20 bucks a month, you get on the show. So here's what he writes. I just listened to your review of Spider-Man Homecoming, and I have to say that you all made some pretty good points about the film, Props to Anthony for catching those timeline inconsistencies. Oh, yeah. As Rugboy pointed out, this is not the original Spider-Man from the comics to diehard fans, but that's okay. This was done well by Sam Raimi in the original Tilby Maguire films, and I'm pretty happy to see a departure. My reasoning is I think Marvel wanted to try something fresh and different that hasn't been done before cinematically, and it works for the most part. It's a fun film with a lot of positivity, and as a result, it seems as if Peter Parker doesn't have a reason for fighting crime, as Anthony pointed out. But I think it's because Marvel is assuming we already know Peter's past. 
and origin story from the other two movies. And I'm happy I didn't have to see that portrayed again on film. Originality goes a long way in making some new fans. And there's no reason we can't see a darker, more mature Spider-Man in the next film to make Rug Boy happy. Keep up the great work, guys. And congrats to reaching one of your Patreon goals, Joe. Talking nerd. Thank you so much. Good. good. I mean, and I, I, I can't disagree. He makes good. Well, points. I don't disagree with him at all. I mean, we basically said the same thing. We liked the movie, but we had our criticisms. The thing is, it's not that we wanted to see Uncle Ben again. Yeah. We all agree that we don't yes, want to see yes. that again. We just want to see that there is some kind of aftermath from that happening. We didn't also just want you to completely erase any mention of it, like at least allude to it. So it builds a little bit on because the, I mean, like, if you look at the timeline, this should happen like maybe like six months prior. That's true. It's we very recent. Yeah. yeah. He's only 15. This shit just happened. Yeah, if your fucking father figure dies. Your aunt and your and you should be feeling that all the time. You'd be a little more broken up than he seemed to be in the movie. Yeah, I agree. Uh, look, I, can I make a comment about our Patreon goals? Uh, so I've adjusted the Patreon goals and I'll explain why. One goal was to get our hosting covered and Patreon listeners, you are doing that. Thank you so much. The second goal, Anthony, if you remember, we were like, if we get like 30 bucks a month, we'll go back on SoundCloud and yeah, Spreaker. SoundCloud's going belly up. Yes. <laughs> so I have to delete this goal. First of all, we didn't get a lot of plays on speaker, but SoundCloud, check this shit out. I got, I think I have links here. Uh, it laid off 40% of their workers, like unexpectedly. Uh, they have no money. And the most recent article I saw said they are SoundCloud can only have enough money to run 50 days. for another 50 days. Oh, I'm, shit. I'm sad. I love SoundCloud. Dude, you know how many musicians we're talking about? Our, uh, Mike Rips, who we just got turned on to, uh, who he wants to come on the show. He's very excited. We're going to... Uh, Podcast.ph has their whole website. Yes. Stuff. A lot of bands are on SoundCloud. It's not great for podcasts, but there's tons of music on there. Uh, if you're on SoundCloud, listener, I would download all your tracks, back it up. If you have a podcast on SoundCloud, get it the fuck. Okay, hopefully you have the master files. Oh, I'm saying like if you're a listener that just listens and not uploading, you can't. No, I'm saying as a creator, uh, this is crazy. uh, And it's a German company. Uh, Another uh, people, employees are calling this as a shit show. uh, And it's just a mess. And and they're they're not going to be around. For longer. That sucks balls. That's crazy. That's crazy. They tried doing the the VC money. SoundCloud Go. Oh, which is your premium. premium option, which would have been like your well, Spotify or your Apple Music. But no one was putting stuff on SoundCloud that was really that cool. So what are we learning here? Is that there's a whole generation of people that are growing up not paying for jack shit. Yes, and it's and, catching up to them and, now. And now none of these things are viable because everybody wants it to be more free, less commercials. And no one wants to. And who's gonna? How is this gonna be fundable? You can't. You know what? Also, I read an article on SoundCloud today where it's Spotify and Apple Music have forty million subscribers between them. Wow. Title has three, three million. The only reason they were able to get three million is they got exclusive rights to um, Beyonce's album, Jay Z, Jay Z, and I think Kanye. Kanye, right, right, right. That's the only reason they have that many people. So they have kind of proprietary stuff, right? But isn't three million nothing? It's not, nothing it's not a lot. Not when not. you have when you have forty million between two other companies. Yeah, and yeah. Spotify is huge. So and SoundCloud was going for that. So the only reason they got anybody is because they had like they bought rights to like record companies like Taylor Swift. Right, and, like, right. But SoundCloud's whole appeal before that was I or me or anybody Rugboy. could put anybody shit could up, put shit up. Mm-hmm. or you could find mixes or mm-hmm. DJs were putting their stuff. There, up. Also, their embeddable player is it was really nice when you embedded in a thing. And SoundCloud also was like. There's a lot of weird, wacky issues where, like, you would look up a song and you would just get the song and not the entire album. Like, the user experience wasn't great. But it's the only place where you could comment uh, at a specific portion of a right. track, which that was kind of cool. But who's doing Who cares? Nobody's doing yeah. We were on that for a year. There was not a lot of plays, and it's not a really good place for podcasts. They had a podcast beta program. They have RSS. I love SoundCloud, by the way. It's Well, you say but goodbye. But I'm going to say goodbye. Say goodbye to it because it's But done. that's the thing. Like, we saw Blab go. We saw a lot of things are gone now. Yeah. Yeah. So every every week you, f- you see another company that you think that's going to be there is just just SoundCloud crazy. fans uh get ready to not have it anymore. So in terms of our Patreon goals, 
I don't know. Maybe, listener, you can recommend what our goal should we'll, be. We'll I have, figure we'll, it we'll, out. We'll One day the Jock and Nerd podcast will not be viable because <laughs> you guys don't want to pay for it. <laughs> Luckily. Luckily, we're not now. We don't need a lot of money. We need some. And our listeners are paying. No, we're, li- we're listener supported. Oh, shit. Uh, and then last thing, uh, Ron Hans just today sent us like an essay <laughs> on Spider-Man Homecoming. Let me, let me summarize it for you. Yes. And then I'll read the last line. I, I used to have to read passages like this when I was in CCD. Look, Ron, I appreciate We love this email. And uh, CCD, that's like a Christian thing, right? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm Muslim. sorry. I don't know yeah. what that is. You, but Christian. you know what fucking it is. I you went just to Sunday it. school. Yeah, I heard. I had friends who were Christian. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll summarize uh, it. First of all, thank you for writing in, Ron. Great points. Anthony, summarize we, this. There's no way you can read this on the show, Ron. But we appreciate the email <laughs> I love a this lot. enthusiasm. You basically agreed with us and then pointed out why you disagreed, which is fine. Yeah, he's kind of defending the movie, but also agreed with us. He basically said that this movie was trying new things because we yes. it, it was in a no win position because yes. there's movies prior to that have done everything that we've already asked. And you know, and he's right. So there's there's two sides. He's to not this a, he's not necessarily right, but he has an opinion <laughs> that he's allowed it's, to have. It's- it's up to the person to think, hey, you can throw all this shit out and and say, hey, I'm enjoying this. I can throw out all this history and still enjoy it. Yes. And if you can do that, that's great that's for fine. you. A lot of people that's have enjoyed great. it that yeah, way. That's fine. The last line, he says, thanks and keep pumping out the great content. You guys are still number one in my queue. We haven't fucked it up yet. Remember? I hope not. We're like, we'll fuck it up eventually. I want to be number zero in your queue. <laughs> Rod, thanks for supporting us on Patreon and listening and writing in, and that's the show, people. Uh, anybody have any final thoughts? I say penis a lot of times. That's I, good. I said dicks a lot of times. You did mention sucking dick a lot. Yeah. I it, it, it was like cool because you were like, that girl sucked that guy's dick. That girl sucked guy's dick. That guy's dick. Then you suck each other's dick. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, then it went, it went, I went off the rails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got abstract. Yeah, this is what happened. Rugs, tell the listener where they can find you online. Don't find me. Don't find you? <laughs> it's, I'm on Twitter. Do not go to Rugs' Twitter. And it's account. really Rug Boy on Twitter, but nobody even has signed up, so it doesn't matter. I have, like, a lot of people on there. Remember when he had more followers than we he did? He did at one time. Yeah. Then, then there was a time when he was uh, arguing with Godzilla people about Shin Godzilla. That was great that also. Was, that was a lot of fun. I just want to fuck with Dance a lot. Yeah. Plus, Rugs, is gonna get, he got us the Mike Rips connection. Yes. So we're going to holla at Mike Rips. We'll chop it up we'll with him. We'll chop it up with him. You'll be all be able to peep I, it. Uh, yeah, just some cucumbers. Some <laughs> I love yeah, a nice what, what chop chopping, sound. Right? Yeah, what we... Firewood. <laughs> <laughs> chopping broccoli. Yeah. Oh. Chopping broccoli. <laughs> uh, thanks for listening to this horse shit, listener. This has been the Jock and Nerd Podcast. My name is Imran. My name is Anthony. He's the Jock. He's a nerd. We'll peep you next time. This is going to go down in infamy for the amount of times dicks have been said in the podcast. <laughs> How many dicks? Don't suck any dicks on the way to the parking lot. 37 dicks? <laughs> a lot of dick, 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 dick. How dick, many dick. dicks is that? Dicks? A lot. It's a lot. Yes. You know what that Madonna song was about? Ah, uh, yes. You've learned your judo well. Ah, uh, yes. I see that you know your judo well. Uh, Gentlemen, this is Democracy Manifest. Okay. Get your hand off my penis! <laughs> Nerd. Before we do the post show, I gotta pee again.